Um, I think the deputy minister is also here. Good morning to the deputy minister as well. Uh, colleagues, um, just one housekeeping matter. Uh, I'm sure you would have all received this morning uh, the letter from the chief procurement officer of ESCOM, uh, which I'm um, advised uh, was dispatched by him to all of us. Uh, so that should be in members' uh, emails. Um, <clears throat> I think we may have to have a discussion as a committee uh, probably later on today about how we approach that particular correspondence. It may have a bearing on our hearing tomorrow uh, insofar as how we handle the hearings with ESCOM. So the hearing is proceeding, uh, but uh, <clears throat> that correspondence uh, does uh, uh, bring a new dimension. You will recall that when we met with ESCOM last week, um, we were advised that the chief procurement officer has been uh, suggestions is a doctor's uh, note. <clears throat> there were comments and suggestions made last week in the meeting which we have not um, dealt with. Um, and now the correspondence which we received uh, this morning. So I'll request colleagues that uh, you, you take time to uh, look at that uh, and then we will have a discussion about how we handle that particular uh, correspondence. So that's just that one uh, an announcement that I would like to make uh, as before we start. <clears throat> so we welcome you. Uh, we welcome Prasa uh, this morning. Uh, so what colleagues, what we'll do is that um, Prasa's got a presentation uh, which they would like to make. And of course, this is understanding that this is a new board and also there is a new CEO. And so whilst their successors in law, as we know, they would not have necessarily been the people present in the year under review, but that does not in any way absolve them from accounting for, well, the set of financials and the annual report, which has been submitted to parliament. So I'll request that we get that presentation very briefly for it to cover the salient points. And then we're gonna start with expansions and deviations with Honorable Sonia. And then Honorable Hatte will come in with the annual report. And then Honorable Lise will uh, take us to the home run uh, with investigations. Uh, at that point, we'll then hand over to the minister who will uh, make comments and responses and observations on the hearing. Um, so colleagues, um, let us, if we may, in that fashion, and then um, uh, put Ben Sestombi, the minutes of the meetings that we have not had, which we have not adopted, uh, we will probably circulate those and um, uh, for, for tabling probably tomorrow evening in that uh, graveyard session with the SIU. So may I request then that um, Prasa uh, starts and Mbago Somio will be on standby immediately uh, once they conclude. So chairperson of the board, we will hand over to you. Um, and so everybody, good morning and welcome. Happy Tuesday. Thank you very much, uh, chairperson, uh, 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 Honorable Shengwa and uh, all other members of the committee, uh, Minister Barula DM, DG, and the colleagues in the board. Um, uh, good morning. Uh, the uh, presentation is prepared. We'll, I'll ask that we, but before that, maybe I just deal with a quick um, apology uh, from our side. The board <clears throat> is uh, present, uh, majority of the board. I only received one apology so far from the board but the rest of the board is available uh, uh, chairperson to this meeting. The uh, acting group CEO has taken ill yesterday. Uh, don't know whether she's been, she's been booked off until Wednesday with a high fever. Uh, but I don't know if she's been able to link up, but uh, we have uh, the leader of the delegation in terms of the presentation. Uh, uh, Mr. Matebula will do the presentation and we will then deal with the, <clears throat> all other issues, uh, the questions. Uh, Chair, the last time we met, 
uh, with COPA. We were fairly new. We said uh, we requested that we be given a bit of time to go and receive some reports and be briefed with the briefing with the, by the officials so that we understand the, the issue that uh, we need to respond to be accountable to, obviously inheriting uh, from the previous board. That has happened. <clears throat> we had asked that uh, we needed to meet and get a report from the, uh, the uh, Special Investigation Unit and the Hawks on all the matters that uh, finding has been found on. Uh, we have uh, met with the, both those organization uh, or in, in investigating institution and they given us a <clears throat> full account on what is being done and the investigation progress and uh, where they are in terms of completing uh, the investigation. Well, of course, I think the deadline for the uh, special investigation, they told us the, the, the contract end on the 28th, but they need 15 days <coughs> more to finalize the report, the final report, which is the 15th of March, to consolidate all the issues. While I'm on that chair, I must just say that uh, after the presentation uh, by the uh, special investigation unit to SCOPA, We've noticed a bit of, uh, there was an omission. We had spoken to them. They promised that they will do the erratum to the uh, report. That is in relation to the recovery uh, that uh, Prasa will recover 26 million. And they omitted to speak about the 23 locomotives, the commercial agreement. I think they would then do the erratum to that. Uh, chairperson, uh, uh, yes, indeed. I we did promise as well that uh, we are, had at work to look for Group CEO. You did mention that uh, in your introduction. Uh, that has happened. The cabinet finalized that appointment uh, last week, and the announcement was made um, uh, in the in on Saturday. So at the moment, we are parent, currently finalizing the issue about the offer, the formal administrative ta task that need to be done, and signing of a contract for the Group CEO to then start running. Uh, without uh, wasting more time, maybe I should uh, then allow the, the, the leader there of the delegation, Mr. Matebula, to present. Uh, the, I must say, uh, Chair, while I'm on that as well, just to apologize. We know that we have submitted to you the, the, rep uh, the report you wanted on the 24th. And once we have uh, done the, the review ourselves, we felt that there was more information column that we needed to add on the columns that were available on the template that we did. That, that column is a column that explain what are the action that uh, PRASA has taken uh, and what are the consequences that uh, is being followed. So that, uh, that, that, that document would have been the one that you would receive late, um, if I, late like last night or last night. So that's the only thing that changes, but the rest of the presentation remain as it was in fact forwarded to your good office on the 20, on the 24th. Having said that chair, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Let me ask uh, Mr. Matebula to, to walk the scope uh, through the report, uh, uh, as you said, briefly, and then we get into the salient point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Just one quick request, uh, colleagues. Uh, into the delegation, uh, Parliament Communications requests that we all uh, turn on our cameras when we speak. There's always a heightened interest in what we do, and so I'm told we are being streamed again. So if we may all just uh, turn on our cameras as well when we speak, right? But Matebola, over to you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and um, and um, uh, good morning to the honourable members, uh, the minister present as well, and the, the board members and the chair of, of the board. Uh, good morning, um, Chair. I'm I'm just going to take you through the the presentation that uh, we have prepared, as already indicated by the chair. Uh, I'm going to fly to the presentation, and uh, but I must also share apologize because I've got a very unstable internet connection in the event that uh, 
uh, I lose connection, but I'll try to move with speed so that uh, I cover all the issues on this particular presentation. The, the, this presentation chair deals with uh, the, the uh, deviations as well as uh, variations and expansions of contracts uh, within PRASA. Uh, first for the 2019-20 financial year as requested by uh, the committee. And later on, uh, we also have the 2020-21 um, financial on, on variations, but there are no deviations there. So if I may just start, I will start on that first slide, uh, which uh, I'm sure you are familiar with the regulatory framework that uh, uh, deal with uh, issues uh, pertaining to uh, deviations as well as the expansions and variations of contract. You, se section 79 is quite common, uh, empowering the treasury to grant uh, uh, departures from, uh, in this case, the, the normal procurement uh, processes, but this is broader than just a procurement because it talks to the entire PFMA that Treasury may be approached to, to deal with that particular issue. Um, but my I'm, I'm, I'm told the presentation, I'm told the presentation is not beamed. No, it's not, it's not up. And we also would like to request you to introduce yourself and state the uh, okay. the position that you hold at PRASA. Okay, I will try to be my gain uh, Otherwise, if it doesn't appear there, uh, I just want to check. Does it appear now or not yet? Um, no, it doesn't appear. And, uh, it does not appear. Yeah. Like, no, it's not there. And your, your camera seems to be only showing a half of your head. There you go, right. So we see okay, you okay. now. Okay. The presentation is still not up. It's still not up. No. I don't know. It appears here by me. Um, I don't know why it's not all. Uh, okay, let me try again, Chair. Is it still not up, Chair? No, it's not up. Um, <clears throat> I always requested that these trial things be done prior to the meeting so that we don't have these kind of technical issues when the meeting starts. Apologies, Chair. Um, maybe I should ask one of my colleagues at least to beam Chair from their side. Mr. Mulem, are you there? Can you just beam it for me? Uh, Willie, it says host disabled participants can share it. So there are only a few people who can, who have control of the, of, of the presentation. Let's just okay. uh, locate your name and we'll do that for you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Apologies, Chair. Does it show? All right, the presentation is up. May we please move with speed? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, my name is Willie Matebula. Um, I'm, I'm actually a, a treasury official and uh, seconded to PRASA as, as part of the, the team last year that uh, was supporting the administrator at the time. And, and currently I am the acting uh, CPO there. Um, whilst I'm still at Prasa. So that's a position that I'm, I'm currently holding. And of course, providing the support as well on uh, SCM uh, technical issues in, in the organization. Uh, Chair, let me just then quickly move apologies for that uh, with speed. The, the first part, Chair, uh, I think the committee is familiar with. I hope it is, uh, you know, uh, beaming now and the instruction note three, which uh, the committee is well aware of, uh, that deals with uh, the, the deviations as well as the, the variations of, of contracts. And then of course, we're relying on our SM policy internally within PRASA. Now, now Chair, the, the first slide there uh, just indicates uh, deviations for 2019-20. There, there is, of course, this information, some the information we've extracted, especially on deviations, was extracted from the treasury regulations because, I mean, this gets recorded every time uh, applications are either approved or not approved by treasury. So we, and the reports are available on, on the treasury uh, website. So we extract that information from those reports, Chair. So the first part there, there was an application uh, that was made by PRASA uh, to uh, treasury uh, to appoint DPSA as an implementing agent uh, for a number of projects, station modernization, as well as uh, the rail network itself. Uh, Matebola, sorry, but can the presentation please be prioritized on the screen? Okay. And let's go to the very substantive issues of, of, of it um, because time is really not on our side. I'm going to ask us to move with speed, please. Okay. Great chair, this one. Oh, sorry, chair. Yes, Pap Samuel. Uh, noting that uh, Mr. Matebola is dealing with matters of um, deviations. Yes. Um, and, and those are the matters that the committee um, uh, is uh, pertinently interested on. Can, can, can he go into those uh, uh, areas? where treasury was approached and the reason for such and, and uh, mainly uh, for them uh, going forward in terms of implementation, mm -hmm. though treasury did not approve such uh, deviations or, or ex extensions. I, I'm, I'm saying so because uh, the, the area of being told of uh, the extension, this extension that um, running through the entire uh, chain uh, though indicative of their own planning problems, but but our 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 interest uh, should be on on the very same areas where treasury declined uh, such a, a deviations and extensions, and 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 uh, what action has been taken, and and why if not uh, action was not taken. Right, that's fine. Let's let's do that then. Uh... Because I, I was what I was saying that let's go to the salient points. So substantively, the expansions and deviations. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm just gonna go straight to the issue where Treasury did not approve, and then, but in the majority of the these uh, deviations. Where Treasury did not approve, uh, PRASA also did not proceed uh, with those projects. That's uh, basically in, in a nutshell, Chair. Uh, there is one, uh, this particular one, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, it was a request to, to go to and use Transnet. Uh, Treasury, uh, you know, still wanted additional information on that particular. Uh, application and uh, for some reason, then Prasa went ahead and um, 
partly uh, implemented. And uh, there is a process there on that particular slide number eight, the consequence but, management. But, but, but yes. the presentation is not up. It's not and, up. You know, and I, I think you, you can't be saying for some reason Prasa went ahead. That's not a, that's not a substantive uh, comment, really. So I think, so I'm saying, let's deal with the substantive and salient issues specifically and in detail. Now, when you say for some reason, Prasa went ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether anybody's got any sense of semblance of what that means. It, it can't be. So can the presentation is um, go up? Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to request colleagues with the can questions I, can you, you I, had. Can I request? Really, this, is, this is not going right. OK. Um. Chair, firstly, I'm not so sure because I did uh, indicate earlier on that I've got problems with my presentation. Maybe that's the first thing that we should sort out, Chair. From where I see, I, at least I can see the presentation. If I can just, Chair, appeal, please, and ask for your indulgence, at least to help me on, on, uh, on the, the beaming of the presentation. Uh, ben, um, press officials have been given the ability to do these things, right? So I, I'm not, it's not on our side. Chair? Hello? Yes, I can see the presentation now. Yeah, I think Kakhil has, has, yeah. yeah, has been able to, to be Yeah, it's just come up. Wait. All right, thanks. Okay. Let me go back a bit, Chair. Uh, the, the first three items, Chair, on this particular slide, there were applications made to the Treasury, but all of them were declined by Treasury, and PRASA did not proceed with those projects. The first three on the slide, Chair. Uh, these projects will be issued um, on an open competitive bidding process. Uh, the next slide, Chair, slide number six. Uh, there is an expenditure of about 275 million. So when an application was made to Treasury there, this particular expenditure uh, was already incurred. And uh, to that effect, Treasury did not support and, and PRASA has since, uh, you know, suspended officials who were involved in that particular program. Uh, this was the ECPO um, station modernization uh, um, program chair. The next two applications were made by Treasury. Did not, I mean, PRASA did not, uh, Treasury did not approve and PRASA also did not proceed with those projects. Then uh, the, I'm sensing you are. Yeah, let proceed, Babuson. No, man. No. <sighs> you can't go on like this. Uh, your, your, your presentation is, is, has, got, has got monetary implications. Yes. Uh, some personal related matters. So, in your, in your provision uh, of the stated um, uh, actual implementation. You must you must indicate to us um, how much has been involved in a particular contract, and after the, de the declining uh, of the uh, treasury uh, consent, what are you doing currently, and how far are you in terms of that? Because when you approach treasury, you approach treasury because you think that is urgent, that is essential, and and. Uh, and what is happening currently uh, in terms of that particular uh, functional area. That's so what we are clear um, as to why in the first instance have you applied for such a deviation if you are still saying we are still going to do ABCDE and so forth. So, so tell us extensively what is actually happening in the contract.
Chair, should I start from the beginning? I would, I would have imagined that we should have started by my table. Like, here's the issue. Mm -hmm. well, colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, but I doubt I am. An application not being approved by National Treasury and trusts are not proceeding with it does not mean that the application was not done. And we need to know why in the first instance you would have gone to make an application. And then if National Treasury amongst other things says to you, go on an open bidding process if you had said it's one provider, once there's a sole provider, we need to understand how you would have arrived at a determination to begin with why you thought you should make an application. When is, whereas the law is clear. So it's to, to say that it was decanted and you know, didn't proceed is not substantive, nor does it hold water, because we need to we need to get to the basis of intent, because that is how corruption breeds itself. So I yeah. think let's we, we need to go into each transaction to say we made an application here for this reason, and National Treasury declined it for that reason. So that members can, we need to hear it from you. It's one thing that we've read the, the presentation. We need to hear it from you, substantively telling us why something which is an exception, the deviation was being normalized. I think that is substantively what we want to, but Bob, will you know this when we, when we were at Treasury, this is how we deal with expansions and deviations. Let's, let's substantively get to that point. We let's okay. not have this blanket approach, which I, those three were not approved. No, no, no. Absolutely, I think that is where you are. Exactly, Chair. That's, that's, where, that's where we are. Otherwise, I take the Okay. Heard you very well, Chair. Okay, let me start, Chair, from uh, the, the beginning. There was an application uh, on to appoint the Development Bank of Southern Africa from PRASA that was submitted to Treasury and uh, to indicate that um, because DPSA has been an implementing agent for various other departments in terms of infrastructure. So PRASA felt that uh, they could use uh, DPSA as well and deviate from uh, the procurement processes. And um, when this application came to Treasury, <clears throat> we had a look at it and I was still at, at Treasury by that time, Chair. We, we interrogated this application and uh, had uh, meetings with uh, at DP, um, I mean the, the PRASA colleagues to find out exactly what was the reason for um, uh, taking 5.4 billion and giving it over to, to Prasa. One, because if uh, DBSA itself is going to go out on tender and procure these particular uh, goods on behalf of Prasa, the question was what then stops Prasa from doing exactly the same by going out on a competitive bidding process? Uh, this chair was for the rehabilitation of the rail network as well as for a station modernization a program. And uh, given the reasons that we, we then cited at the time to, to PRASA, then this particular application was rejected. And an instruction was given to PRASA to say, PRASA, please go out on an open competitive bidding process. This was uh, some time in, uh, in 2019, uh, almost towards uh, the end of 2019. Uh, then last year, Chair, uh, due to lockdown, some of these uh, projects have not as yet gone out on tender because there was that period of lockdown where we couldn't issue tenders because nobody would have had uh, responded to some of these uh, uh, tenders, by the way. So currently what is happening, we are preparing, um, of course, uh, tenders that will be uh, going out into the market uh, to get a number of bidders uh, to participate in that particular process. For the rail network, 
as well as for the station modernization program. So this 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 is where this particular project is here on on GBSA. Then the the second one chair was for the leasing of locomotives for MLPS for a period of six months. Uh, in this particular case, out on tender in in uh, March 2019 to invite a, a bids for the leasing of locals for the MLPS. And whilst they were preparing to evaluate that particular tender, then they requested Treasury to at least appoint on an agent basis a particular company by the name of Primfield so that whilst they are evaluating the tender, at least the service is not interrupted. And at that particular tender, as we speak now, HA is under evaluation as we speak, but at least that service was indeed rendered. And here I must also quickly point out the, the bottlenecks that were there in, in the system at, at Prasa. Here you'd recall that the public protector uh, in the derailed report had also indicated that uh, all tenders that were above 10 million within Prasa should be subjected to probity. So in other words, before you finalize those tenders, all of them, as long as they're above 10 million, they, they had to go through that process. Now there were capacity issues within Prasa uh, to have enough auditors to audit all projects within Prasa, because most of the projects within Prasa are a capital uh, in nature and they exceed the value of 10 million. So that was the bottleneck that was in the system. Hence, uh, Prasa had to come up with some kind of uh, uh, contingency plans to make sure that service is not disrupted. So that particular project on premier field, uh, of course, uh, did take place at, at that particular time. Then, uh, Chair, the next one is uh, LKKB Engineering. This was to repair the OHTE uh, from Pretoria to at least Olifants uh, somewhere here in, in the East Rand. And um, the project as well was an emergency because this has to do with the, the electrical line, the overhead uh, traction equipment which was damaged at the time. And then they had to repair that on an agent basis. Then they applied to Treasury. Treasury granted an approval and that project was of course undertaken successfully. I will move chair to, to the next slide. Uh, this the next project has to do with the station modernization in Isipingo in, in, in Durban. These were consultants, um, which were up. Honorable Chair. Yes, Honorable Hattem. Yeah, my, my apologies. In, in, in instances where it indicates conditionally supported, can we get an, an, an understanding what were the conditions and those conditions if were they met by Prasa? All right. So it, it just says conditionally supported, but uh, Uba Matibula does not explain the conditions. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sure. Well, it, yeah, it, in the case of um, a premier field chair, the condition was please fast track the evaluation of the tender. That was the condition. Uh, in the case of uh, LKKB, uh, it was also a condition that uh, Prasa must make sure that in future, there is proper planning so that uh, the principles that are, of course, covered in the Constitution as well as the PFMA of a fairness uh, project. Then, Chair, if I can just move on. on. On the next one, these were consultants which were appointed, of course, by Prasa. Um, they went out on tender. They put a panel of uh, consultants together. 
but now when they were they had to select from the panel they did not go out on on an open tender i mean to approach all the members or the, these bidders who were on the panel they simply went and selected six companies out of that panel directly and uh, that resulted in uh, an expenditure of uh, 275 million now after this expenditure was incurred because the, the, this expenditure was incurred and paid for then they went to treasury to say uh, we are seeking deviation now when treasury looked at this particular uh, deviation treasury said but this thing has already been incurred Otherwise, uh, you should have come to Treasury before you, you even appointed this company. And then and Treasury declined that application. They instructed Brasa to follow a condonation process to condone that particular expenditure of uh, 275 million. Now, in order to conduct this particular uh, condonation, you first need to go through a process of investigation who is responsible, what consequence management has been taken against those people, et cetera, et cetera. That is why this particular transaction, as we speak now, is uh, still a subject of uh, SIU. But internally within Treasury, I'm sorry, within PRASA, um, we have also uh, suspended at least five officials who were involved in the appointment of these consultants. So that is the the issue on that particular uh, transaction. So we, we will await the outcome as well of uh, SIU. I mean, those officials were, were suspended pending the finalization of uh, the SIU investigation. But the expenditure itself has already been incurred. I will talk to this one again later on, Chair, because there's something else that happened on that particular one. Then the, the, the next one, uh, was a, a request, of course, uh, to to buy critical spares for the uh, depots um, on an RFQ basis. And uh, Treasury as well rejected this particular application. And uh, currently what is happening there, uh, Prasa will be going out as well on, on an open competitive bidding process chair uh, to acquire those um, space. So that, that is a position insofar as this one is concerned. The, the next one chair is uh, uh, involving a, a sinkhole uh, that had to be uh, undertaken and then fixed for an amount of 24 million. And the treasury also did not approve this one and, and Prasa also did not proceed with that particular transaction, but of course, an open tender process is, is currently being implemented to fix that particular sinkhole in, in the Centurion area. As you may know that uh, Centurion has got dolomite and so on, a lot of um, sinkholes there. The, <clears throat> the next one, Chair, is um, an, an, an approval to um get accommodation for drivers for auto packs in small towns as well as cities so um this was for an amount of 20 million now the the reason given at the time it was that it was impractical to invite tenders especially in smaller towns where auto packs is uh, traveling to um then an approval was granted by Treasury conditionally. And that condition was, yes, in small towns, you can simply go and look for accommodation for, for drivers, but uh, in big cities, please go out on an open competitive bidding process because in big cities, at least there's ample accommodation. So that was a condition. <clears throat> this particular project has not yet been actioned because uh, Brasa is finalizing the specifications again. So that, that, that is the status of that particular transaction. It has not taken place as yet. The, the next one, Chair, talks to 
again, the rolling stock maintenance spares, where an indication was, was made during the application that uh, multiple suppliers would be um, appointed and uh, Treasury did not support this one at all. And in fact, instructed uh, Prasa to go out on an open competitive bidding uh, process. And that is that process is underway chair. Otherwise by now, Prasa could have gone out, but uh, I think the whole of uh, last year, almost half of last year was inactive. So this process has been uh, kicked off and it is going to go into the open market. The, <clears throat> the next one chair, talks to the rehabilitation of the tracks, the pairway. Uh, these are those big machines that um, fix the, the pairway from time to time. Um, because if pairway is not fixed, then you also run a risk of uh, uh, trains derailing. So <clears throat> there was an agency on this particular uh, project. And then uh, Treasury, um, of course, also conditionally, supported this one uh, because there was already a, a, an open tender process which had been invited at a time. But this one was just for a short period of six months to make sure that at least the, the tracks themselves are fixed. So the, <clears throat> this particular tender now is actually being finalized uh, in terms of evaluation as we speak now. And once it is uh, evaluated, I mean finalized, I'm talking the condition granted by Treasury, then we'll have a, a at least a, a longer term contract, which was invited competitively to fix the line. The, <clears throat> this next one, Chair, uh, refers to the rolling stock uh, commodities, which uh, uh, are held by Transnet. And uh, an application was made for a single source chair on this one, because um, there could be a number of other uh, players in the market who could offer the same uh, stock commodities. So <clears throat> this one treasury supported, but before it could finalize that uh, application, the treasury requested additional information from Brasa to finally sign off on this one. And uh, before that information could be uh, supplied to treasury, this particular uh, transaction was actioned. So um, uh, to the tune of almost about uh, 40 million uh, worth of spares <coughs> and components were drawn from, um, uh, from Transnet at the time. She must also say that one of the conditions that Treasury put in here, Treasury said, it could be that the stock that you, you're getting from Transnet is obsolete because it could have been in the, in, in the stock within Transnet for quite a long time. So they wanted to make sure that uh, if Prasa takes the spares, the spares uh, could still be usable within Prasa. But that information was not supplied to Treasury. And uh, there is consequence management as we speak right now, Chair, um, which, is, which is underway, which is in progress uh, to deal with the individual who, of course, um, undertaken this project despite the condition that Treasury replaced. So Chad, this then takes me to the end of deviations for 2019-20. Uh, uh, if I may momentarily just um, interject here. Yeah. We're gonna run into a slight difficulty, uh, colleagues in this matter, because <clears throat> the person presenting, Mr. Matebula, was at National Treasury. And so would have adjudicated in the main on these deviations and expansions from that perspective, uh, from that position, from that vantage point of National Treasury. Uh, in our seats, uh, in a process seat, now reporting from a process perspective on expansions and deviations that he would have adjudicated upon for lack of a better term at National Treasury. And I think that the absence of the 
uh, acting CEO in this regard is a problem. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, she's indisposed. Uh, because we would have already interacted with National Treasury on some of these matters. So for all intents and purposes, Mr. Matebula is now a player and a referee in this reporting. And that spells a particular conflict of interest. Uh, it's not one which I'm saying is personal, but from a reporting perspective, uh, it, it provides a fundamental problem. Uh, as you would have picked up, he said on one of them, he was at National Treasury at the time. Uh, he's seconded to PRASA from National Treasury. Uh, somehow it, it raises a very, it, it makes it very, very difficult uh, building in checks and balances into the information we are getting. So that's why I'm just interjecting here because <clears throat> I, I've got a particular worry um, about the sequence of events uh, on, on, on this particular matter. So members, I'm just raising that, flagging it for now. I'm not sure how we'll proceed with it, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm, it, it, it worries me uh, under the circumstances. Um, and I understand the limitation you have, of course, at Prasa with this hearing that new board acting CEO and all sorts of other things <clears throat> that have happened. An administrator who is no longer there and arising out of court implications. <clears throat> so this particular section then, I'm, I'm raising that, that, that issue. It's literally like throwing a javelin to run ahead and catch it yourself. So I'm, ju I'm just raising that uh, issue, colleagues. I'm not sure whether we'll proceed, but also whether we want to um, take over yeah. from here and pose questions, and then we'll go to expansions. All right. Well, 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 well Chair, there's, there's one which we are supposed to deal with, uh, the, the one of consultants, uh, the, uh, which uh, goes to an amount of 275. A million rand. It did not finish there, but but the, the, the area you are raising is a very uh, important area, which uh, I was going to latch on differently, uh, in in a in a sense that um, a a number of applications have been made to national treasury uh, for such deviations, and and the national tre treasury subsequently. Um, could not approve some, and some uh, were conditionally approved. On those which were not approved, uh, what we are getting uh, from Mr. Matibula is that they are in a process uh, of a uh, ad advertising search, or they are still uh, uh, setting uh, to a mode uh, the terms uh, of reference uh, for such uh, procurement uh, process, um, the the result is is a, a consequential um, uh, to the the fact that we have been experiencing lockdowns, this and that. Um, you, you know, yes, but that's not an excuse. Uh, that would have provided the institution time to deal with these kinds of matters. Uh, than locking themselves down. Uh, you see, um, working on terms of reference, people are going to receive their pay at the end of the month. Uh, matters which have gone to National Treasury for their own agency and importance, um, when they fail at the test, they ought to have pulled with them um, there and there uh, and, and begun uh, that kind of a setting up what is in the realm of the office, uh, in terms of reference, this and that, preparations for such a call and so forth and so forth, which, which goes back to the fact uh, that uh, is, is there any capacity that, that exists uh, in the procurement section uh, to handle these matters? Uh, and and, and uh, it, it's as if even now, uh, uh, matters are perpetually 
um, on the same uh, track and train uh, of uh, ineffectiveness. And we might experience, and we might see the very same uh, matters reoccur uh, in terms of wanting to push matters uh, through uh, the deviation angle, which might not necessarily uh, assist um, the PRASA functionality. Um, so, so, so th th those questions are the questions that, that I think they ought to be attended to. Looking into a number of these uh, uh, kinds of applications uh, which have been declined and, and so far, nothing has happened in terms uh, of seeing those processes, certain <coughs> adverts out, at least adverts out, uh, sort of uh, uh, things should happen, uh, uh, you see, in favor uh, of Prasa one way or the other. So, so, so thank you very much, Chair. Okay, um, thanks. Uh, well, so I'm right in reaction to that. Uh, just mal over this particular dilemma. Right, Prasa? Chair, okay, thank you very much. I think uh, on this, maybe before even Mr. Matebula speaks, <clears throat> well, I, Chair, I noted your your concern um, about the uh, question that uh, the Prasa Acting Group CEO isn't here, and that Mr. Matebula is now having uh, to wear two caps and in, uh, interchangeably. So that is a concern, uh, but I think in dealing with the chair, we really in your hand. Uh, if you your committee feels that, because this was uh, something that happened um, without necessarily anticipating that it would, do, it would. if your committee maybe uh, wishes that we need to take a different approach in terms of uh, future, in terms of coming forward, we will be willing to do what you direct us to do. But on the, on the question that has been posed or comment that has been posed, we accept that um, it could have been dealt with much better the issue about going on to a tender in the process during the period that uh, paperwork is done. And uh, when uh, we get better status of the country change, then we're moving into the process of um, uh, adjudication or evaluation. So we accept that criticism that should have happened like that. Uh, in fact, in a discussion where the board as well as official when some of the explanation was given, we also made, made the point that we should have gone ahead with the paperwork and not wait until now and therefore we delay more. We then our process is going to delay more because we're now only now waking up. On the issue of capacity, there, there is been a real, uh, our own assessment that we need uh, to beef up capacity on the issues of the, particularly the procurement section. Uh, we need uh, capacity, not, not capacity and skill, uh, proper skill that we put into that so that we don't have a, the problem that we had before. So I, we take the comment that this is exactly what the board is seized with in terms of the current situation, current poor, in terms of beefing up the capacity so that we don't recur the problem that has been there before. Uh, that's that's uh, all I can say, Chair, if Mr. Matebula wants to add uh, on what I have just said, I think uh, he's well welcome to add on that, but uh, we take note of that, Chair, thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair, uh, you are absolutely correct. I think we are hard at work as we speak now to put specifications on a number of uh, areas within uh, within Prasa, but of course the capacity issue, as raised by the chair, is a reality. And 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 and, and chairperson, I also take note of the fact that uh, I was on the other side and I'm now at Prasa, but this is just trying to help uh, the ship uh, to move. Chair, can I then proceed, Chair? Uh, this was the last slide on deviations in the interest of time, as you, 
uh, alluded to earlier on. I'm just gonna move to. Uh, the... um, I'm going to I'm going to make a, a suggestion, uh, colleagues. Okay. Um, maybe we, we should. I think our dilemma was the flexibility in so far as allowing a presentation and a hearing. Um, because I think substantively these issues would have arisen more sharply if we started with the annual report uh, on that one. <clears throat> so I think what we'll do, colleagues, let's park the issue of expansions and deviations momentarily. Um, and then Honorable Hadebe, we start with you and you take us to the annual report. Uh, because I would imagine one of the issues that will arise is the issue of vacancies at PRASA, uh, raising the question as to why you've got people seconded from National Treasury when, instead of people being appointed to those positions. So I think, uh, colleagues, let us momentarily park the issue of very ex expansions and deviations. We'll come back to it once we have concluded on the uh, on the on the annual report, I think also has made a very fundamental point about the issues of expansions and deviations, as this was his section in any case. So, um, Chairperson, before what we'll do is we're going to start the hearing on the annual report, um, and then uh, Honourable Lisi will come in on investigations. Uh, and I think the issue you have raised uh, with us uh, as a committee will raise it then. Uh, probably as a preamble to your section. So let us park expansions and deviations and go substantively to the annual report. Honorable Hadebe, uh, it's half past 10. Uh, I know the Chair, annual report is bulky. Sorry, very sorry, yeah. chair, very sorry. Just, just one thing for our Okay, sure, that's fine, no problem. Yeah, um, just to the board, uh, uh, how how many meetings had the board held uh, uh, during the time um, uh, since the declaration um, uh, of 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 the status uh, which has led into the lockdown uh, up to now? How many meetings has the board held? All right, um, right. How many meetings has the board held since its appointment? Just during, during the lockdown, during the lockdown period. Uh, Prasa. Uh, uh, Madam Matebula, are you there? I am here, Chair. Yes. The question? Yeah. Okay. The, the, go ahead. Yeah. Chair, I, I thought maybe the, the the Chair would respond to it, and, and um, unless maybe the Chairperson of the... Uh, Committee okay. Okay. would want me to come in. Okay, advocate, do you do got the question right? Um, the question relates to the meetings during lockdown, chair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Good morning to the committee chairperson Sangwa and and committee members. Um. Chair, I'm not sure from which lockdown, um, because we are only appointed last year, October. Yes, but I, 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 I gave you a rather to that question in a sense appointment, so the question still stands. Yeah, um, so. Chair, yes, Chair, um, understanding the, the, the animal that Trasa is, um, we have had, I think, I think more, roughly speaking, more than no, no, close no. to more, 
No, we can't have roughly. We want a specific number. If the information is not readily available, it can be pulled it's, out. It's not readily available, but I was giving an estimate, uh, Chairperson, that is that no, is no, closer no. to... And, and, I'm saying, and I'm saying no to estimates, no. no, I, no I, estimate, I, no I can estimate. assist the committee if that is the case, because I thought I was going to assist. But it's fine. Is the committee is the company secretary here? Yes, I am, Chair. Right. How many board meetings have been held since the board was appointed? We've had 14 meetings. That's, I think that's a very simple. Thank you very much. Right. Well, we saw your 14 meetings. Have, have taken yeah. Place. Yeah. 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 No, 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 Chair. It, 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 it really tells of a, 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 a so deep rooted a problem um, that Prasa has. Uh, it, it might it might go into um, a number of issues that they are dealing with during such a kind of meetings. Looking into the just just what we have looked into now, uh, uh, you know, um, I, I would want us to probably probe that question further uh, after the annual report has been tabled. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, sure. No, that's fine. We'll park it at that. Uh, for now, it's just noted. Just flag it. Um, then I, I still wait for hard day. Yeah, honorable hard day. It's half past. Uh, let's see how far you can go, and we'll assess at half past eleven, and then honorable list will be on standby. Right over to you, Bob. Um, yeah, over to you. How I much time do I have, Chen? Take us to half past eleven, and then we'll assess then. So that honorable list can also be able to have substantial time on investigations. But we'll say right. if you need more time at that point, we will give you more time. No, thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Let me take uh, uh, this opportunity and, and welcome um, the minister, deputy minister, um, the chair of the board and board members, including, uh, I'm not sure whether the newly appointed Group CEO is present, but uh, welcome. Indeed, Chair, the board was appointed uh, around October 2020, and roughly they've been in office for almost uh, five months. And the board has appeared before us. Uh, unfortunately, I was not part of that meeting, but I've got the records that when the board appeared, um, there, there were certain undertakings that the chair of the board made, and he will correct me if I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, the chair indicated that the priorities of this board will be to address uh, the root cause of um, audit findings, including poor record keeping, poor financial management and instabilities in key positions, um, lack of consequence management. So. That was the promise and undertaking that was made by the chair when appeared before Scopa. Um, at the time, they were fairly new, so uh, we understood. And from our side as Scopa, we also highlighted issues of concern and we wanted uh, the board to deal with these issues when they were going to appear for the second time before us. We wanted issues of clarity in relation to security of rail and the protection of rail infrastructure. Uh, what, what are the plans to address the issues of vandalism of infrastructure as well as consequence management? So in dealing with uh, this annual report and audit findings, uh, my focus uh, and area of uh, hearing will be premised on those undertakings that were made, including the annual report and, and audit findings. But firstly, Chair, uh, the, the, the issues that led to the uh, PRASA receiving two consecutive disclaimer, uh, AG highlighted the following contributing factors. Instability at both uh, board level and, and key management level uh, in relation to the key and strategic position, your group CEO and CFO, uh, which has negatively impacted on the in entity uh, uh, Prasa as an entity. 
But at least today, Chair, we are happy and we're pleased that we have a permanent board and we have a permanent uh, group CEO. However, when AG appeared before us, uh, and I think this first question, Chair, it's directed to the minister. We were informed that the board was not duly constituted. Some of the uh, position were not filled. So my first question as a point of departure in welcoming the, uh, constitute, uh, uh, the board being constituted, honorable minister, have all key position been filled in the board? Because AG highlighted that uh, the board was not truly constituted at the time of its uh, uh, appointment in October the 20th, 2020. All right, um, I'm, I'm not going to be coming in. So as soon as any question has been posed, can we just get a response so we can save time? Should I repeat the question? Oh, no, remember that question is directed at the minister, right? Yes, and um, we were under the impression that both the honorable minister and the deputy are present. So, been, oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you, honorable fix it. Yes, I'm here. Yes. I was directed that I will speak at the end, but if members want me to answer some questions, I'm just reporting, Chair, why are you Chair? No, Minister, I think yes. you, may, you may proceed with answering the questions which will assist, but your opportunity will be given to you as agreed at the end, no problem. Okay, thank you, Chair. I will note the questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So should I, pro okay, that's fine, Chair, let me proceed. Uh, but what I was trying to raise and, and highlight, Chair, that part of the contributing factors in relation to instabilities, it's this uh, and vacant post and positions. Um, you'd understand that ordinarily uh, in our country, the turnaround time to fix, I mean, to fill any vacancy, it's three months. I want to get a sense and understanding how many other senior positions are vacant within PRASA, which are currently uh, managed by personnel within PRASA. And what are the plans in place to fill those vacant positions? And what, what is the age analysis of uh, those vacant and key critical positions? What is the status of the group chief financial officer? Um, this question is directed to uh, the accounting authority, which is the board. You've been around for five months and I'm sure you had time to interact with all the uh, findings within the Auditor General's report, which this is one of the key and critical uh, finding that relates to instability in the board. So can I get an understanding uh, in terms of vacancies and the age analysis, the status of the group chief financial officer and do you have a project plan to fill those positions? Uh, turnaround time in the country to fill any vacancy is three months. Advocate, can you respond to that? Okay, advocate. Um, well, Chair, if I can just quickly just respond to save time. Uh, the the first thing that uh, the vacant positions. Uh, when our assessment, uh, Chair, is that uh, we the the structure currently as it stands is bloated. As we have done our analysis, the structure is top heavy. Uh, the board has taken a decision that before we even fill the vacancy that may have happened, what we need to do is to review the structure so that the structure of uh, PRASA is, uh, is lean and mean, is able to do 
the delivery of the work that it needs to deliver. At the moment, it's top heavy. We need the structure that is able to do that. So we have not gone on to filling vacancies, but mostly vacancies that are, are there would be lower than the top management. But the top management is, is, is too big. It's too wieldy. It's too much uh, layer before you get to the top. So we want a structure that responds to the challenge. So we haven't uh, gone that. We're hoping that by the first uh, new financial year, we'd have done the structural review, be able to then say it's a match in place, that people are able to be matched in a particular position, those that are unable to meet, that they will be able to do something else. Obviously, this is a process that we also want to have a, a skills that's appropriate for people in those particular positions, not just a body that is in that position. So that's at number one. The number two, Chair, is that uh, the issue about the Auditor General and in finding and capacity, uh, as a result of lack of capacity, the problem, the recurrence of the problem, we uh, working with the management has put together a, a, a focus team that deals with the AG's findings and what is it that need to be done to make sure that those recurrent findings is, doesn't happen. So you know that there's two years that was a problem. We have done the first year in terms of uh, dealing with all the findings. And I was informed recently that the 72, 73% of all the first year has been cleared up in terms of the audit findings. They are now working on the, on the year two. So the plan was, a uh, project plan was chair that uh, by the time we get to the new auditing, that all the issues that have been raised by the AG in the two previous year are cleared, that we are able to look at the new financial year, not having to look back to the uh, two, two years behind us. So that's our plan chair. So that in terms of dealing with this. So, uh, 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 I think maybe let me leave it there. If there's anything that I didn't uh, say it sufficiently, I can always add on to it. But that's how we're approaching this. Uh, you did mention the issue about security. Maybe I should deal with that issue as well. Uh, we have uh, been able uh, in the period that we are looking at the security, the plan, that we uh, finalize the integrated security plan that we have done uh, in the process now is basically getting the personnel to support the plan. You would know that the minister did speaks about insourcing uh, number th uh, 3,100. That process is 99% uh, to its completion. And of course, uh, coupled to that is in the plan, we make provision that we need to have community participation uh, that are able to be a sustainable process going forward that the community can also be able to be the eyes and the ears in terms of vandalizing of the property of Prasa. So that's what we have in terms of that chair. Uh, we, we, we're hoping that by obviously now, from Monday next week, some of those uh, projects will then start to hit the, the road in terms of those integrated uh, deployment at various stations where we are having station. Thank you, Chair. So if, if, with, if I with, with, with thank your you. permission, Chair, with your permission, if I may add on what the Chair has said uh, in respect of the, the earlier point that he highlighted. My apologies, uh, Honorable, Honorable Mr. Hatev. Chair, we, in addition to what the Chair has, 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 has indicated, has said, we, we, we have agreed as a board that there is a need that skills audit be done. Uh, at Prasa, uh, and the skills audit would ordinarily lead to a process of placement or restructuring. The, the, the current situation at Prasa is that you've got a bloated uh, management um, uh, structure, five-layered management structure, which is too bloated, and you have 17,000 employees, and Prasa performs at 17%. Uh, really, that calls for a serious skills audit. And from that on, I think we'll have a sense as to what kind of process should we have, uh, because there's no need of having a 17,000 workforce performing at 17%. And it's on that basis that 
a restructuring will be inevitable. Skills audit uh, will be inevitable to ensure that we've got a lean up tracer that is going to uh, ensure that uh, it, it delivers uh, service expeditiously. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. If, if I were to follow up on that, um, when did you start it with the skills audit and when are you anticipating to conclude the process, the time frame? Chair, the skills audit has not commenced as, as we speak. Um, uh, with the, with, we, 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 we anticipate that in the next quarter, it would be undertaken. The reason why it has not commenced uh, we've got a situation where employees come on a rotational basis um, at, at, at work. So it's not really conducive for it to be performed uh, uh, normally as it would be performed. But we would come back to, 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 to SCOPA to inform it comprehensively about the outcomes of the skills audit. But what I can say, Chair, in respect of finance, for instance, we don't have it's, we, we've got uh, capacity problems. In, in, in respect of the procurement, we've got capacity problems. So Chair, we have to ensure that pe people who are put in, in certain in, in positions are people who, are, who have requisite skills so that they are able to perform the task uh, at hand. Thank you. The, the, the position of the CFO? The position of the CFO, to my understanding, Chair, is that we've agreed that it should be advertised, and um, um, we we we're going to ensure that that is done, uh, possibly before the end of next week, and ensure that we've got a CEO that would be uh, up to the task moving forward. Now, I'm 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 raising these issues given I understand you you fairly new. Uh, but there are certain issues, uh, especially if they are highlighted by the Auditor General, that ought to have been dealt with expeditiously. If we're able to fill the position of the group, a uh, chief executive officer, um, why is this one uh, uh, taking so long? We want to see a board that is committed to expeditious resolution of issues as it relates to the current instability. In one of the press uh, conference, the chair of the board indicated that Trasa is the broken business, and my assumption is that this board is capable of fixing that broken business. And for us to be able to have comfort that indeed you are equal to the task, when action speaks louder than words, we need to see some sales of agency. Hence, I ask even the age analysis of some of the vacancy. Mind, mind you, that uh, strategy or uh, structure always follows strategy. So I had an area of concern when we are starting with skills audit without having a structure in place? Or what is it that you want to see moving forward in terms of this bloated uh, uh, structure in, in, in uh, a person? So can I just get a sense what led to uh, the delays in filling this position? Maybe if I, if I may, uh, please chair. We, we have inherited uh, a dispute with the previous uh, chief financial officer, which was uh, which was in fact uh, fired, and there was an existing dispute, so we could not fill in that vacancy until the dispute has been resolved. Uh, currently, uh, we have made a proposal. I think uh, maybe Advocate should have just uh, for remember to put that we have uh, made a proposal to settle with this particular individual so that we are able to advertise. That proposal uh, I've seen has gone to the lawyers of that particular individual, and we're just waiting for her to accept the offer that has been made so that we are able to advertise. That has been the delay, the sticky point, because uh, in law, we can't appoint someone on top of a position that is under dispute. Thank you, Chair. No, no, thanks. Yes, uh, see, detail in this aspect assist. No, I, I take the point and um, I, I welcome the, the, clarif the clarification. Thank you, um, Chair. Uh, let, let us move to the performance um, of, of, of PRASA um, in line with what the Auditor General has also highlighted. 
given your period, um, I'd like to get an understanding. What are the plans uh, in place to ensure that you will have a credible fixed assets register? Uh, and how long do you think uh, that process will we, 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 undertake? I'm raising this because the Auditor General in, 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 in his report stated that there were assets uh, that were recorded in, in the register where a sufficient and appropriate document were not available. Uh, uh, included in that was the fact that this financial year under review, not all uh, required supporting uh, records were included and submitted for audit purposes. Uh, record keeping issues on previous uh, 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 findings remain uh, unaddressed. So as this board, um, can you just give us a sense in, in terms of your assets register, whether or not you have a plan in place to deal with, with, with that uh, aspect? Could you ask uh, uh, Director Ndidi to, to speak on this subject? Mm -hmm. Person, am I audible? Loud and clear. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, with regards to the fixed asset register, we have also inherited an issue where we had document control uh, uh, problems as articulated. Um, however, what we have done as well is that from the ICT perspective, is uh, we have um, tenders that have gone through now or that are being advertised now to actually enhance and to improve our, our, our document um, control. And that will also assist us in making sure that there is no loss of control because the documents are, are, are um, are saved on the cloud. That's one of the, of the advertisements that we have done. And number two, with regard to the fixed asset, uh, we were supposed to start it last week. However, it has been postponed to this week, Thursday, where we're going to go to one of the stations and we have to physically check um, the, the, our network assets and our assets in that station. And that is the drive that we're going to, to, to do in the few days to come to make sure that the viability of the assets, the availability of the assets is recorded properly because we have an issue that our fixed assets was not properly uh, recorded and it was, it was not verifiable, some of them. So that is the thing that we want to, to, call, to, to make sure that is done before um, the next audit cycle starts. Thank you, Chair. So um, you, you were breaking up, I couldn't hear you properly. So you're saying the plan in place for you to have a fixed asset register that is uh, properly managed is uh, for you to source, you have outsourced that responsibility and you will be advertising a tender next week. Can you hear me better now? Did I capture you correctly? Yes, I can hear you now. No, that's not what I, I said. I said that we have inherited an issue where we had- but, can, Perhaps, can, can I just repeat my questions? I wanted to know what are the plans in place to ensure that you have a credible fixed asset register? And what are the steps, uh, plans in place to ensure that this happen? And what, what, what are the timeframes for you to achieve such? Thank you, Chair. I addressed, two, I addressed two things. I addressed the document control situation that we have inherited. The fact that uh, AG was saying that um, they couldn't find documentation on to support mm. certain assets that mm. are, are on our fixed asset register. That addresses the point of document control. I said that there is a tender that is being advertised uh, where we want to st strengthen our uh, control environment, our document control environment, such that documents can be stored on the cloud rather than just having them on files that can be lost, that can be misplaced. 
That was the first thing that I addressed. Then the second thing that I addressed was also to address the verification, the physical verification of the assets. And I've said that we have a drive that we were supposed to have started last week, but because we had a, 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 a a corporate plan meeting that we have to get on out of the way. We couldn't start it last week. We're going to start it in this coming Thursday, where we're going to visit one of our stations and make sure that we physically verify uh, what is there at that station. And at the same time, update uh, the fixed asset register. So that is our drive in making sure that the fixed ad asset register addresses what is physically on the ground. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Does this relate to your IT challenges and IT performance? Because in the audit report, AG highlights that the IT deficiencies, which were previously reported for five consecutive financial year, have remained uh, uh, unresolved. And there's large number of vacancies in your IT uh, uh, department, including the information security officer and the recently dismissed CIO. So the question is, have you been able to fill some of these critical key positions within your IT department? I understand uh, uh, the skills audit, but there are certain departments where you cannot function without, and IT is one of them, and it poses threat on your governance and contribute negatively. So in relation to your IT, uh, um, have you moved in, in that regard? Uh, thank you, Chair. I can also take that question. Um, we have recently filled the the CIO position uh, uh, last year, and those are that is one of the positions that has recently been confirmed in terms of the probation process. So that position of uh, Chief or Group CIO has been a, a filled, Chair. Um, so I can say that our ICT environment um, is getting to a stable uh, position, including the staff represented in that uh, department chair. Thank you. Yes, that, that's not the only position that is vacant. There's large number of vacancies in the IT department as per the Auditor General's report. So my question is how many vacant positions are there over and above the one that we have already highlighted that has been filled, including the information security officer, do you have a sense um, of what is it that you have currently and what is uh, vacant and any plans moving forward? Uh, IT, it's, it's very uh, key and critical for any success of any business. Or are you adopting the same posture when it comes to, to IT uh, uh, of doing a skills audit even though the AG has highlighted that this impacts negatively on, on, on present. Uh, Chair, can I then ask for the uh, further addition to what I've responded to, advocates Manga City need to also add on what I've said, it was because I think I only uh, address part of your question, which is the group CIO, thank you. Yes, Chair. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, indeed, the position of this group CIO has been filled. And Chair, in, uh, we don't want a situation whereby we'll fill in positions when skills audit has not been done. And that Chair would appreciate that it's going to be a process that uh, we, 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 it's consultative together with the unions and staff. So, uh, Chair, right now we can assure, we can assure SCOPA that um, um, the CIO has been able to ensure that all the information that we have at PRASA is stored on the cloud and, um, and, and the security, the IT security system is, is, is placed on track. So he's handling all those things, Chair. And then at the appropriate time, I think we would give the, the SCOPA a comprehensive um, uh, response in relation to this. But I must say, Chair, the, the CIO is also part of the process that to ensure that 
all what has been raised by the by the by the auditor general is attended to. So there's that process that is in place uh, to ensure that we rectify whatever um, uh, adverse findings by the auditor general. Thank you. So moving towards 2020 and 2021 uh, financial year, are we getting assurance that all supporting documents and records will be available for audit purposes? Have you? Uh, Chair, Chair you, yeah. when, when, when we were appointed, our first meeting, when we requested the meetings of the previous board meeting, we were informed that there is there are no board minutes. But the CIO has been able, together with the the with Ms. Mapule Tabete, uh, to ensure that um, we go to our system, uh, recordings are transcribed, and accordingly, we can confidently say, Chair, we have now we do have now the minutes of the previous board meetings prior our appointment, and uh, uh, as we go along, we ensure that uh, uh, documents are stored on the cloud. Uh, for for security reasons. Thanks, Chair. All right. Let us move to uh, regular expenditure. Prasa is ranked number one top offender when it comes to irregular expenditure. Uh, for the financial year under review, uh, regular expenditure that has been disclosed uh, to the amount of 1.3 billion with a closing balance of 28.6 billion. Now, AG stated that a, a previous reported non-compliance have remained unaddressed by senior management. Ineffective steps were taken to prevent irregular expenditure from happening. Uh, senior management has allowed a culture of non-compliance in the entire uh, 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 organization, which is present. Now, meaning if senior management have allowed this culture to be entrenched within the entire organization, to put it bluntly, uh, uh, everyone do as they please. Uh, if we were to go and unpack what I'm, I'm raising, Chef, uh, there were contracts that were overspent without obtaining necessary approval and that those contracts amounted into 194.4 million. Payment to suppliers without signing the contracts, which amounted to 39.8 million. Competitive bid process not followed, including splitting of codes, which amounted to 1.09 billion. And despite all the above, uh, a chair, no investigation was carried out for all instances of irregular expenditure reported for the financial year of 2018-2019. No evidence was provided for the link between the action taken against employees and reported irregular expenditure for the financial year 2017-2018. Yet irregular expenditure continued to increase for the past three financial years, starting from 2018, we were sitting at irregular expenditure of 24.2 billion, 2019, 27.2 billion, and the current year under review 2020, it's 28.6 billion. Still, there is no evidence of any disciplinary action and processes taken against officials. Now, having been in office, for six months and having received such a report and given your statutory duties uh, 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 and expectation in terms of the PFMA, have you instituted investigation on issues relating to irregular expenditure? Have you identified officials implicated in this irregular expenditure? Uh, how many officials are we talking about have you been able to finalize cases that were left unattended for the past two financial years? In, because we understand you are new, but the law of succession also does not exonerate you from taking action when issues of uh, non-compliance has been highlighted by the Auditor General. 
So I'd like to get an understanding uh, uh, the action that has been taken in relation to irregular expenditure thus far. At least uh, five months, uh, no, why? Uh, 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 there must be movement. <laughs> Uh, Chair, we, oh, indeed, go for first. Okay, thank you. Am I audible? Loud and clear, ma'am. Please proceed. Okay. Um, I wanted to address the steps that we have taken with regards to the irregular expenditure, the first part, and then the advocate will deal with um, any investigations or identification of employees. Um, with regards to um, irregular expenditure, we have noted as we came in that we have had a series of irregular expenditures of which condonation was never sought. In all the irregular expenditure that PRASA has had, there has never been any application for condonation. So we, uh, when it was reported to, to the board or to the ARC uh, committee, we ordered that we should start the process of condonation. Then there were about 116 uh, condonation application that were brought. But uh, for them to be uh, successfully completed, they needed to be uh, turned back to internal audit such that they can evaluate the, the benefit that PRASA would have um, derived on this application. So though that process is still underway, Chair, in terms of making sure that uh, we have a watertight condonation process so that uh, those can be reduced. And I think in, in, in regard of um, the investigation and whether there are employees identified, let me hand over to Advocate Sitini to deal with that. Thank you. Um, can, can, can I, before you, you, you mentioning that there were 100, how many coordination that were identified? It's 116, 116, 116 condonation. 116. Yes. Okay. Chair, I'm raising this because uh, the irregular expenditure framework from National Treasury is very. Uh, very what I explicit. said, Chair, is that um, the, the 106 years has. Yes. We, we we seem to be losing you, ma'am, and you, you're breaking up. I'm not sure whether. Honourable no, I think you, you must proceed. Uh, her line may be um, not helpful, uh, but she said applications for 116 had been made. So I think let's leave it at yeah, that. Yeah, there, there are certain processes and and and, and measures in, uh, that you need to put in place before you even apply for condonation. While you need to verify whether. You did not suffer any losses and there was value for money. Two, you need to have identified the officials responsible and you need to have instituted disciplinary proceeding against those officials available, uh, uh, responsible. Now, the, on that 116, it seems to suggest that all these steps have been taken. Therefore, you will be in a position to be able to tell us exactly out of the 116 application, how many officials were implicated? Did you receive value for money? You did not suffer any loss as the entity in relation to your application of condonation. Uh, uh, what were the recommendations from the loss control function in relation to your uh, 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 condonation? Those steps that are highlighted uh, in section a 60 of the irregular expenditure framework, have you been able to comply with all the steps before arriving at the process of uh, uh, applying for condonation? And what are the remedial actions taken by the accounting officer, or in this case, uh, the accounting authority to prevent such from happening in the future? Because the, the, the condonation application, it's the last part so you need to satisfy Treasury that you have undertaken all this process, including remedial action taken to prevent such from occurring in the future. So that you don't go to Treasury, apply, and then Treasury will send you back to say, 
you have not undertaken one, two, and three. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, pro pro proceed, ma'am. Okay, whilst we um, try and navigate uh, her network, there was a response which the advocate was about to give. Uh, can we get that so it doesn't get lost in the... In, 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 yes, thank you, very thank you very much, Chair. Chair, consistent with the irregular expenditure framework, we, we, uh, we, the board has resolved to, um, to, through Treasury, to appoint uh, uh, firms of attorneys that are going to carry out these investigations on behalf of Prasa to in and also one of the briefs uh, will be for those firms of attorneys to in, to ensure that consequence management is um, is carried out. We leave no stone unturned. All people who are fingered will be processed through that. Uh, I, I believe that chair, the treasury is still um, um, uh, in the process of, of, of ensuring that those firms of attorneys are authorized for us to move ahead with them. Thank you, chair. Um, I, I advocate, there has been an indication of 116 application for condonation. Now, are you saying that was done prematurely? The ir uh, uh, irregular expenditure framework is explicit that you may only do that once you have submitted the following document. One, you first have to confirm that you did not suffer any loss. If you have not done that, you won't be in a position to arrive at the process of applying for deviation. Two, you have received value for money. Now, the request for condonation must be accompanied by this following uh, uh, document or information. Confirmation that the determination test was conducted. Findings and recommendation of the loss control function and other function were conducted. Findings and recommendation from internal audit functions and other relevant functions that conducted the investigation. Confirm that there are no losses that were incurred. So, but from what I'm hearing, you're saying you have now appointed a service provider to, to do exactly that. Yet, we are told that 116 uh, 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 instances of condonation have been applied to National Treasure. Now, my question is, your, your application was done prematurely without satisfying uh, uh, yourself with all the requirements in terms of the framework? Chair, my response, wa my response was in relation to the investigations as to what it is that is going to be done and what consequence management are going to follow. I was not attempting, Chair, to answer the question that uh, the Chair has, uh, has, has, has now repeated. I was only dealing with the issue of consequence management and investigations that are to be carried out to ensure that those who are fingered by the by the Auditor General's report are identified and are brought to book. And that is the commitment, Chair, that we are making to SCOPA. And it's, it's a commitment that we are going to ensure that any member of management or any member of staff who is found to have contravened the provisions of the public Finance Management Act is going to process to, to be processed in terms of the, the procedure that is recommended in the irregular expenditure framework, i.e. taking um, um, disciplinary steps against the person. The issue of the value of the money, I'll leave it to the finance chair, but uh, I think in as far as investigations and consequence management, I have attempted to answer the question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chairperson? You may proceed, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Um, what I was trying to explain before I got cut off, um, I was saying there are two parts. 
of the uh, irregular expenditure. There's one that has been referred to the SIU and the Hawks that the Hawks and the SIU are investigating. Mm -hmm. And that is the first part. Then there is part that was submitted, which I mentioned, which is the 116, that was submitted to the Audit and Risk Committee, not to the National Treasury yet, for uh, the application uh, for condonation to be uh, processed and go to National Treasury. And when it came through uh, to the ARC Committee, we resolved that we need to make sure that there is a consequence management uh, documents, which at that part, at that time, sorry, it was uh, not there. And we needed to get, to get internal audit to verify that there was benefit that was derived from the, 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 the 116 application that was brought before us. So as we sit, Chairperson, we are yet to get, when we meet now in, in March, we are yet to get um, the feedback based on the last uh, documentation that was submitted to us that satisfied that now we are ready to make sure that those documentation on the national treasury template is submitted with supporting documents to national treasury when it is completed Shepherson. thank you so the 116 is over and above what the siu and the hawks are looking at thank you Yes, uh, ma'am, I'm precisely referring to that matter. I'm, I'm seeking to get a sense or an understanding whether or not the internal investigation has been undertaken. You, you reported that uh, thus far as the new board, you have met 14 times and you are almost five months in office. Now, I'm not getting a sense whether or not you are moving with speed in addressing uh, the issue of irregular expenditure. Section 51 of the PFMA requires that an accounting authority must take effective appropriate steps to amongst others prevent irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure from happening. You are going to be dealing with the audit of 2020, 2021 very soon, we need to get a sense and a feel that you have done whatever you can to address irregular expenditure from happening. Also, uh, the PFMA dictates that you need to identify officials involved and institute disciplinary proceedings against those that have uh, uh, incurred or permitted irregular expenditure from happening and have remedial actions to prevent such from happening. That's the sense and the question of clarity that I'm seeking from your side. Having been in office for five months, are you at this yeah. current juncture unable to, to say to us, these are the officials that have been identified. We are moving with speed to address. Remember, these issues date back to 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019 financial year. Now for them to be, unless you address these issues, the value and the amount of irregular expenditure will escalate. And I think from where I'm sitting, at least five months, it's, uh, it's a reasonable time for a new board to indicate to us that indeed they are dealing with issues that the previous board could not deal with. The previous board inculcated a culture of non-compliance. It was everyone do as they pleased. There were instances, maybe they were given tenders to, to friends who don't know because none of them were brought to book. So I don't think in this meeting it augurs well uh, uh, that you have not moved in that aspect. Precisely because the, the, when I first uh, spoke, I highlighted the undertakings that were made by the chair of the board to move with speed to address consequence management. We want to see that within your five months, you have been able to deal with consequence management to root out the culture of non-compliance. I'm not getting that comfort 
from where Chair, I am. Say, can I? Thank you, Chair. May, I, may we assist, Chair? Um, I think we are trying to explain to the best of our ability, Chair, that we are following a process. And that process is exactly in terms of the expenditure uh, framework that uh, the Chair has alluded to. And it's a process that cannot be rushed, Chair, because as you know, there is a procedure that has to be followed to the letter when it comes to consequence management. Immediately, why Buddha? People will be reinstated. So what we are trying to do, Chair, is to ensure that we follow the process to the latter as it is prescribed in the, in the regular expenditure framework and in terms of process policy as well, to ensure that we have a credible report that is going to say X is a manager at a, at a particular division at Prasa, has committed uh, 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 financial misconduct, and this is how this person has to be processed. Right now, Chair, we cannot, we cannot really discipline people in the dark. We have, to not, we have to follow the process and ensure that the process bear uh, 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 positive results. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Chair, uh, if, Chair I, uh, if I may just, uh, if I can may just quickly just add, uh, I think the point that has been, uh, uh, the question that has been asked by Honorable Hadebe is consequences part, the consequence managing part. I think what it's fair maybe to say that uh, in the engagement we had with the, the special investigating unit, they almost cautioned us in terms of speeding up to uh, deal with consequence management without them finalizing the report because they, they felt that uh, they don't want to take that chance or they advised us not to rush into action unless they present their report which they are going to present on the 15th of March so that we are able then to, uh, to move with speed on that part of Actually, there are names, uh, the Honorable Khadev, but uh, the hesitation is that in terms of the uh, explanation that uh, the SIU has given us cautionary, air on caution until we finalize uh, our report before you do this particular action. What we have on the 116 uh, application that has been dealt with, I think is in the order of about 14 billion that is in the discussion around some of those uh, what what one could call condonation application that will end up with the treasury. So that's all I just wanted to add so that at least we don't come across as we are not explaining uh, the consequence management aspect. We have been cautioned that we should uh, slow, walk a little bit slowly there until everything is confirmed. And uh, just to the lighter note, uh, Honorable Khadebe, uh, your calculation of four months, five months, uh, we're only four months in office <laughs> for, for purpose of accuracy. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. No, uh, it's, Chair, um, I, I think... All right, uh, Honorable Hattab, if you may yeah, begin Chair, to wrap it up. Yeah, Chair, I, I want to uh, 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 explain this, Chair. We are talking about internal processes. I've highlighted that the financial year under review, it's 1.3 billion of irregular expenditure. And Chair, this does not take time. I've even uh, categorized this irregular expenditure to say there were contract overspending without obtaining necessary approval to the amount of 194 million. Now for, for, for the accounting authority to find out who approved overspending without necessary approval. I don't think that takes years. It, it does not need a, a, a SIU, it's internal processes. Payment to supplier without signed contracts. That does not need a, a, a SIU. It, it's internal control measures to the value of 39.8 million. Competitive bid processes not followed to the value of one point. 0.9 billion. Now, these internal processes does not need SIU or special uh, uh, or hogs. It's 
there before you, you can easily identify who amongst your officials overspend without necessarily obtaining approval. And in that regard, have you been able to do so? That's all I'm asking. Not, uh, I'm mindful of the issues that uh, ought to be dealt with by the special investigating unit, but internal controls so that you do not find yourself repeating this irregular expenditure. Because if you do not put a remedial action to stop such, these ones are easily dealt with. It, I don't think it will require the entire uh, uh, 12 months for one to be able to identify culprits. You have a supply chain management policy. It's explicit and clear. It tells you what to do. And you can tell if one did not do as per the supply chain, you can identify that person. That's the type of consequence management I'm referring to. If I may assist, Chair, <clears throat> the, the irregular expenditure framework makes it emphatically clear that an investigation has to be carried out uh, to find out whether people have contravened the provisions of the PFMA. Now, Chair, an investigation has to be carried out. We can't rush it, as the chairperson of the board has already indicated. The SIU has asked us to work slowly when it comes to that. Otherwise, we can. We, 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 if, otherwise, we can. But we don't want to rush a process, Chair, that we know it's going to backfire in, 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 the, in the long run or in courts. So we, we would plead that uh, the explanation that we are tendering to SCOPA um, and in the light of the advice we obtained from the SIU be, be, be noted and then we, we, move, we move forward in respect of what has been highlighted by Mr. Khatib. Thanks. No, no, no. What does move slowly mean? What's the time frame of move slowly? So I, I last week last week the, the SIU was in parliament and in essence what the SIU said it said the corruption at Prasa is that of the Emma Garden of corruption. I'm just no, making I, it I, 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 I'm just making that no, example, I, Chair. No no now, no. Chair, no 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 wait, wait, wait. The issue I'm raising is, when you say move slowly, what does that mean? The it's chair the person, of word, that's an issue. Move slowly. The chairperson has a move, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Is it move slowly or proceed with caution to cover the bases? It, it, that, it, that's the it's issue. It's both. Chair. Well, then, yes, then yes. I want to put it to you categorically that we're not going to accept slow movement on these matters. No, it's just Chair. Not, it's not, it's not, it has it's already not, been, Chair, it's already been indicated by the Chair of the Board that on the 15th of March, we'll be getting a comprehensive report from the SIU. And from that on, then we can move with the necessary speed. But right now, we really cannot uh, rush and, and, and rush, rush the process uh, as, as I've indicated. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, the, look, let's sir, wait not, for the 15th of March. No, look, <laughs> sir, with all, I'm not going to sit here and engage in a, in, in a battle of semantics. From where we are seated, it must be categorically clear that the phrasing that you have used to say you're going to move slowly no matter what vantage point you look at, it is not acceptable. I think that must just be understood. Should due process be followed? Of course it must. There is no doubt about that. We expect nothing less. But you can follow due process with moving with the necessary speed, effectiveness, and efficiency. It's what we're calling for. But we cannot leave this meeting set, we would say, well, we accept the phrasing to say, we'll move slowly. It, it just won't happen, no matter what vantage point you can get. So I think 
that that one falls right out the window. So let's just bring that to an end. I just wanted to to face that because we are not going to accept it, and it's not going to be on our record or the public discourse that we are accepting a price that says we'll move slowly. No, not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, I, I don't think we should really be constrained by semantics right now, but certainly we can assure the committee that we're going to move and ensure that due process is followed and the right decisions are, are taken. Thank you. Chair, no, th thanks, Chair. I think part of that due process, as um, clearly highlighted... Right, Honorable Hattem, you can bring it to come in and then we'll go to Honorable Hattem. No, I'm saying part of that uh, a due process chair, as stipulated in the irregular expenditure framework, it's the in-year accountability monitoring and reporting, uh, section 72. It's very clear that you, uh, the accounting authority must submit monthly information on irregular expenditure. And now, chair, if you're dealing with thousand cases, we are not expecting that conclude all those thousand cases all at once. There is a progress report that will tell you that out of thousand, we have completed two, three, but we're not getting that sense now. The due process, I repeat, includes section 72 of the uh, uh, framework to have monthly uh, uh, report. It also has the irregular accountability cycle over and above all these other issues that are, there are 12 steps there on the accountability cited. That I'm not getting from uh, this interaction chair. It's a pity uh, I'm running out of time. I would have loved to deal with other issues. I, I got stuck on uh, the irregular expenditure. I still have about six issues to raise chair. You will guide me on how we, we, we proceed. All right, no, 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 that's fine. Just check going on a bit. Colleagues, are there any colleagues who would want to raise um, any issue now? Uh, and then Honorable Lees can indicate how much time he would need for his section. Um, and, then, uh, and then we'll take it from this. So colleagues, any issues at this point? Okay. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairperson, yes. Chair, I just want to reassure your committee that uh, the point that you have just made about moving slowly, I don't think there's intention from the board to move slowly. I think we, we accept the point that there's a, we can assure you, give you a show that we will meet, we'll move, we'll meet with, we'll, we'll move with speed, necessary speed to make sure that we deal with this particular matter. Karen, you're noting that there are some of them are got historical recurrence from the from older year. So I just want you to uh, to reassure you and the committee chair that uh, that's not uh, it's not been looked at the literal sense that we are going to be slowly moving on this. We we understand the agency, we understand the action that need to be, and we understand the recovery process of some of the money that need to be recovered. So I just wanted the committee to uh, to be reassured of that uh, from the board. Thank you, chair. Yeah, no, I think chair, that's more welcome than sort of wanting to defend it as was. Um, trying to be the case earlier on. Um, Chair, so if, if, Chair, if I were to ask one uh, uh, issue on fruitless and wasteful expenditure, is it the right. same response? The 432 million irregular uh, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, where 34.2 million it was then interest and penalties on late payment, 12.3 uh, million incorrect overtime payment. Uh, is that the same response in relation to uh, taking actions and recovering the, the, the irregular expenditure? I mean, the fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Well, let's get a response in, to that. Even in, in, in this, the AG is saying no, in, no investigation were carried out for all instances of fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Should I take it that it's the, the same response Chair, I think that if I may, um, that all the all the basket of issues, all the basket of issues that require action, we have put them together into a program to deal with them. So if I were to give you an answer here is that we have identified some of the uh, uh, officials that some of them are already been suspended, some are in the process. 
given that uh, fact that when we arrive on the scene, there were all this uh, uh, number of things that we needed to deal with. So all I can say, Chair, is that the next time, if uh, it's not a, maybe a time for SCOPA, I would suggest that we would give you a written report on the updated action on things that has already been action and action that has been taken so that you don't uh, wait for the next SCOPA meeting in terms of it. So on these issues, uh, we can give you assurance that we will give you that interim report in terms of showing you how many of these officials, what is the recovery of this particular money when the officials are involved in it. All of that we will give you in a, in a special report that we will give you. We are just waiting for this final report from all this investigation so that we compare our findings as we do our findings, normal one, plus of those uh, institutions that we're given permission to do investigation. So that's assurance we can give you. Thank you, Chair. All right, colleagues, any questions on your part? All right. Honorable Liz, how much time would you need? Mr. Chairman, yeah, um, it's difficult to give a time. It depends on how the um, the questions are either answered or obfuscated on. Um, so, all right, let's let's let's, let's hand how, over to you. Yeah, and see okay, let's hand over to you, and then we will do follow ups uh, as a package on both sections because they're, they're, I'm fine. They will overlap. So, um, it's half past. Um, let's assess at quarter past twelve. Yeah, I'm happy with okay. that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one thing, Honorable Hart, be on standby, and then you can come back for round two on your section. Right, Honorable Liz, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to everyone. Um, or good afternoon, is it? Not quite. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely gobsmacked by the clear lack of, 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 of urgency that's being displayed here this morning. Um, I'm sure as, as we are sitting, discussing all these nice points, um, there's someone stealing a cable somewhere. There's someone vandalizing a station somewhere. Um, and yet one of the CRASA members has very proud of the fact that they are off to visit one station later this week. I'm not sure why that one station visit is going to make a, such a big difference um, in terms of, of the asset register, given that so much of the assets have now been vandalized to the point that they are of no use at all. Um, perhaps even someone's building another house on top of a railway line somewhere as we speak. Where is the urgency? And Mr. Chairman, the, the the, the reason for this view and this, this lack of urgency um, is clearly that PRASA operates and continues to exist despite its bad performance. It got 16.5 billion Rand from taxpayers in the 2019, 2020 year. In that same financial year, it performed, it carried 31% per percent of the number of passengers it had carried five years earlier in 2015, 16, 31%. Revenue from fares was 31% as well of its 2015, 16 revenue. There's no time to waste, Mr. Chairman. Processes have to be followed, but they don't have to take so long. They simply don't have to take so long. And so, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's really quite disconcerting that taxpayers are asked to continue bailing out these state-owned entities and PRASA in particular, and 16.5 billion Rand went in 2019-20 year. And we understand that there is a, a role for 
um, passengers to be carried and perhaps to be subsidized. But in, I've just illustrated to you that in 2019-20, this pricer carried 30% of the number of passengers they carried five years earlier. It's not performing, it is urgent. So Mr. Chairman, with that background, the SIU has completed on the first secondment agreement or mandate, um, 227 reports to the value of 33.1 uh, billion completed. 37 cases were referred to the Hawks for further investigations and 23 cases were still outstanding. What exactly has the board done about these completed reports? Don't tell us about the 15th of March when another report is going to be presented. What about the ones that have been completed? Where are we with the action required from PRASA on those? Um, I assume that given that the CEO is not here, that the board chair must answer. Thank you. Thank you. That would be correct. We'll get responses from the board. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and uh, Honorable uh, Lees. The, 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 invest, the report that we were given uh, by the Special Investigating Unit, they, as I indicated earlier, the full report for us to take an action, we were promised it will be ready on the, 20, on, on the 28th of, um, of this month, which is February, but the final report will be ready on the 15th. That's a, that's a time frame that we're given by the special investigating unit when we met with them. So in our understanding, therefore, that uh, we, by the end of this month, we get this. this. These numbers were mentioned to us in the report that we're given, but we will not hand over a report in terms of that particular report that we need to get for us to be able to action. So as soon as we get the report, which I think it should be on the 28th, it was a day ago, two days ago, that then we will start uh, moving into action around those that have been confirmed. So that's the process. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid, um, Mr. Chairman, Board Chairman, um, you're sitting there, and this is an illustration of the lack of urgency, which appears to be the case with your board. Why are you waiting? for the SIU to give you this information if you know that the reports are complete. Why have you not asked the SIU, please give us the reports that are complete. Let's get moving on them. Why are you waiting? Honorable Chair, well, we have uh, had a meeting with the uh, Special Investigation Unit. They told us they're going to give us this report. And the 28th of the month was uh, just a few days ago over this weekend. So as I'm saying, we are not waiting. They, has, they, they have to deliver this report to us and then we start acting on it. There is an agency in the board. I mean, the things that we're doing in the last four months, it shows that we're agent, there's an agency. But in this agency with respect, we have to take in account the caution that they have said to us, don't move until we give you a final report on this particular matter. That's what they told us. Mr. Chairman, let me just, we're talking about now the first, um, the first mandate for the SIU. That ended on the 30th of August, 2019. That mandate resulted in 288 investigation reports of which 227 of these reports were completed. If there was the urgency that Mr. Ramat Lakane indicates there is. I would have suggest to you that I, if I were the board chair or the CEO, I would be saying, give me the completed reports now. I want them, let me see them, let me get on with the job and let's fix this completely destroyed organization. 
So I'm afraid that the answer is what it is, Mr. Chairman, but uh, I find it uh, rather sad in a way. Um, in June 2019, the SIU advised Price, the legal department, to instruct the state attorney to recover 4.5 million from a service provider that underdelivered. Can we please be told who was that service provider? And do they still do business with Prasa? On this specific one, Chair, in terms of June 2019, I, I, I hate to say that it is before our time, but what I could say is that what we need to do is basically uh, follow this up with more accurate information around these particular service providers rather than correctly in the names here. We could give that in a form of writing report so that you have it. I don't have that, uh, that that's detailed information in front of me right now. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I understand what the chair of the board is saying. However, I'm sure there's quite a big team present on this meeting. Surely there is at least one official who can, can provide the information um, for this question. Maybe uh, Mr. Matebula, if you have the information, please uh, go ahead and provide that information. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. I, I don't have that information readily available, but as you indicated, we will gladly provide the information uh, to the committee, Chair. Thank you. Is Mr. Makoro having that information? If he's on the uh, can provide anything? <clears throat> I, I can assist, maybe. Apologies, Chair. Um, I am in the meeting. My apologies. I also uh, do not have that uh, detail, Chair. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, let's move on then, and I trust we'll get the the information um, in 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 short. And you can, I, I'm sure, you will give a deadline for for that information. Um, Mr. Chairman, the issue of document management um, has been raised at previous um, meetings with with Prasa. What, what is the position now? I mean, we heard a report earlier about everything being on the cloud, um, but uh, is, is the, what consequences have there been for people who have not done their jobs and maintained a record of documents as would normally be required in any organization, let alone a state entity? Uh, Director Ndidi, is that certainly provide um, answers there? Or advocates, Tini, that's in your area? Chair, I'm not sure if Mr. Mpelo is on, on, the, on, the, on the meeting with us, but uh, I think the explanation I, I, I tendered earlier would suffice in the circumstances, Chair. Okay, is Mr. Pello on the explanation being the the explanation being chair uh, uh, that the advocate gave earlier on what we know is that we have appointed uh, a, a, a person by the name of Mr. David Pello, whose responsible is to deal with uh, all IT and information and securing of all documentation. Earlier on, I think the advocate mentioned that today uh, there is a creation of, a, uh, of, the, of the soft uh, uh, information, soft uh, filing on the cloud that he has created a system for us to be able to have a backup of information. Uh, so that's what uh, Mr. Mpelo is doing. And I think for now, all the documents of Prasa are now uh, basically secured on cloud. 
with the system that the new system that has been created. I think that is the just trying to summarize what you said earlier on around doc, documentation, security, and our in keeping and safekeeping. Yes, we have found that there was a problem in the past. So this system uh, is already live at the moment and it will help us a great deal going forward. But if Mr. Mpelo is in the meeting, can explain that in more detail if the members so wish to get that feedback in terms of how the system works, particularly around the cyber impact, even the cyber, the cyber problem that we have, the cyber security. That system is, is tailor-made to address those issues. Some, uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. That deals with the, the, the future. What my question was about history, what action has been taken against the officials who should have been keeping the document records on file and who were not keeping them? What action has been taken? It sounds to me like no action has been taken. Advocate, can you answer and help on that one? Chair, I, I can't with certainty say the, there is action that has been taken against those employees. Remember, Chair, we are dealing with a, a AG's report, which I think it's approximately 900 pages. And we've got a steering committee that is ensuring that um, we, we, we address uh, each and every little thing that is, that is detailed there. So, Chair, at the, to answer the the, the, uh, the the honourable member, it's I can I can right now say there is action that has been taken against uh, those people, but safe to say we are sure the committee that um, consequence management is going to be taken against anybody without fear or favour. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I think that can can I just add by saying, uh, uh, honorable else, that the general information some of the officials have left Prasa, but of course we need to 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 give you the detail how many of those officials were part of that. That's the information that we were we were, we were told during the induction that some of those officials have left on their own accord. But uh, the issue is that dealing with those that are still in the employment of the company. For the detail of that, we can also provide in terms of that. That's a historical issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, it's it's just yet another indicator of the 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 lack of urgency um, that I believe exists um, at the moment. I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, Mr. Chairman, the 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 question then um, goes to the deal with um, uh, Foslu or what the Statler and so on, and these locos that didn't fit under the power lines. Um, we were told at the last SCOPA meeting that, um, and I think it was you, Mr. Ramat Lakane, who, um, who said, informed us that there would be a proper technical report completed um, about the use of these overheight locos on our, our networks. And that would be done by the end of January. Has that report been submitted? And what is the, what is the outcome of that report? Is Fana on here? Can is Fana on the on the on the Zoom? If not, um, what what we have been informed and that report could be sourced from the RSR of the locomotives, because the RSR did uh, do, do the locomotive assessment, and they did uh, come with a, a report that indicated. Uh, the areas where the locomotives, particularly uh, honorable member, when you refer to the tall trains, that this locomotive can then indicate, that report indicate which section of the rail network would be where this locomotive are utilized. 
that report does indicate the 25 kV and the 3 kV, which means the locomotives are designated to run at the long distances with the, where the kV is that 25 or 3 kV. That report uh, could, is, can be made available again, because that was done uh, some time back in terms of the locomotives. But if you, the other question is the other locomotive, but that question has not been asked. We did mention that there is a discussion that is taking place uh, with the, the current uh, Statler, with the locomotives that were standing at the harbor in, the, in Spain, that some of those locomotives that were paid for needed to come to South Africa so that they can be used. That process uh, is now going into, is in a liquidation and is going into court. We we're told that it's that that process has to culminate into court around April, where the the court uh, basically because it's a tripartite uh, tripartite agreement, the locomotives Prasa is a part that must receive, and of course the people who Shibambo or Shifambo, as well as the other one being the um, the third company that uh, was then doing this work. So that agreement means that we, what we want is have access to lot of locomotives, those 20, I think there were 23 locomotives that we need to get so that they are coming, they are part, they are now locked into this agreement that must go to court for it to be adjudicated by court to make it a law. The six locomotives that is in South Africa, um, that is still being kept. Uh, that those six locomotives, uh, we uh, know that they were supposed to be commissioned uh, so that when the whole agreement is finalized, that they have done their hours in terms of uh, the test, the commissions in terms of running on our, running on our system. That process uh, of those six, I think, has already begun because they would need a number of kilometers for them before you, they can be approved to be able to run because they need to go under test and that test means that they must be on the on our, our rail system. That's the process, uh, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so let's just start with the six in South Africa. How long have they been in South Africa and, and, and why, when are the testing of these locos going to start? Well, Chair, they, they, they have been in South Africa since the dispute arose between the the contract, which is... Yeah, what, uh, how long have they been? What was the... How length? Not... Give me a, a date of the dispute or a time. Well, since the, there was a court case. Since there was a court case of the... When was the court case? Well, court case was... Uh, it was in the previous board of Popo Malefe. It was around 2016-17, around. They've been here for all this time. And the question of testing, why, why is the testing only starting now? Because they were all tied, uh, Chairperson, with the dispute and the court case around whether the contract was irregular or not irregular. They could not be used because they were part of all the issues that are under discussion. So that process happened and the court, uh, they paid, the whole thing was declared that it was, the contract was irregular, but that uh, the issue about locomotives was here and uh, already that was part of the delivery that had happened to Prasa. So they were not being used, they were standing there parked. The board had to make determination, uh, I think the board before us to say, this uh, locomotive is an asset that is staying here, which the country has paid for. So we need to find a use for them. So hence we said, let's start the commissioning of them. Look at the, uh, because they've been standing for long, whatever that need to be repaired, whatever the snacks that are there must be identified before we get to into April when the final agreement is reached on total locomotives. So they only started being done now because I think the board has already said, we want to have an interest to utilize these locomotives. Even this is part of the, uh, uh, the compact that we've signed with the, with the minister that we need to resolve these issues about locomotive uh, agently. Thank you, Chair. So, so yeah, uh, Mr. Ahmed Lakane. So, does that mean that the um, that the testing is now starting before there's final agreement about this whole contract? The it was declared 
irregular by the court, but did the court then transfer ownership of these six locos to Prasa, or is the ownership still in dispute? It, well, the Honourable uh, Chair, the, the, the ownership is in between that dispute and where they are. But at the moment, they have been uh, in the place where the depot that belongs to Prasa, they've been kept there. These are the locomotives that were delivered, part of those delivery that happened first. But they are still part of the dispute because the total dispute is the number of locomotives. But because they are here and there is access to testing, and we know we're going to be able to have to utilize them. We said, let's be proactive. Let's start testing of this locomotive because in any case, the person who's demanding the locomotive is plus at the end of the day. Thank, Thank you, Chair. you. So let's just get to the, the costs here, Mr. Ramat Lakane. Um, so how much has been paid um, to various companies, whether it's um, Stettler, who's taken over from Foslu, or Swifambo, who were the front company for, for Foslu. Um, how much has been paid so far to any of these entities? Well, the, with the figures, I think, uh, Chair, maybe Mr. Matevilo could help me with the figures, or, or Lazarus, because it's, uh, that's a, a CFO that can help me with the figures. I don't want to rattle figures that uh, you may tie me down, uh, Honorable uh, this, uh, with. Uh, the, if, if they can help us with that, otherwise I can give you a ballpark kind of indication. Maybe, but first, let's get to the specificness. Is uh, Matebula on here, or not Matebula, but Lazarus, in terms of the amount paid, payable? Yes, Chair, um, present, I think uh, it was around uh, 2.6 billion in total. Thank you. So 2.6 billion, is, so is it correct then for me to say that um, of the total order, um, we've received six locos delivered in South Africa. Is that correct? And there are 23 sitting in Spain. Can you, can, uh, Lazarus? Uh, yes, Chair, I'll work on recollection. I think uh, initially there were 13 that were delivered in South Africa. I think the seven were auctioned, and if I'm not mistaken, yes, Chair. And so the balance, I think uh, the, the 23 includes the 13 in South Africa, but I'm not uh, familiar with the detail of that contract, of the new arrangement. Mr. Lee, just one second, uh, because earlier on I did caution on guesstimates and estimates because guesstimates and estimates don't tie you down to anything substantive and they give us a moving target kind of oversight and accountability. So can the actual figures be pulled out? Because when people say I'm working on recollection and say I think and around about, we, 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 can't, we can't be operating. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure that okay. those figures can be pulled out as we as we move on. So um, I, I appreciate that intervention. Thank you. Um, All right. So, so sorry, Chair. Uh, Matozi, one of the, the 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 board members. I just want to elaborate more on the issue that was asked about the chairperson and the locomotives on the Stedler. Uh, there are a couple of things here. The first one is that we have commercial discussion that we are, it's happening, but parallel to that, we go to work together with RSR to ensure that the locomotives that are already here in the country, as soon as the commercial agreement has been reached, they are able to work in our lines. So that is happening between Prasnet, Prasa, and RSR.
to make sure that we don't enter into commercial agreement and we conclude it before we are sure that technically we have resolved the issues that have raised by the RSR. We have given the PRASA management to go and conclude on this discussion. In fact, we did tell them next time when they meet us, they should be very clear that uh, they have resolved the issues and RSR is on board and it's confirmed. So that by the time when we deploy the locomotives, we are able to use them. Currently, we do know that they are able to run on 25 kV, but there are still challenges on 3 kV. That is the solution that the team is working on. So when we meet them, the management, which is Prasa management, the technical team, they will be able to give us update on the status, but they are not doing this alone, doing it together with Transnet and as well as RSR involved because they are the owner of the lines in terms of compliance, in terms of testing them and approving and accepting them. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Mukoba. Um, so essentially, Mr. Chairman, I think it's fairly clear um, that there were 13 locos delivered and we'll get a, a clarity just now of exact numbers as you've requested and I hope it won't take too long of which seven were auctioned off um, for a fraction and, and we left with six. So given the, the, this explanation we've just had about um, using these locos on, on our system in certain selected areas, which is far from ideal, um, why were the seven auctioned basically given away um, and, and six, only six retained. Why weren't all 13 retained for, for use um, on selected areas of the network? Honorable Chair, all I can say is that that decision was taken before we arrived on the scene. It was a decision that was taken by our predecessor. Uh, unfortunately, we, we, we can't uh, speculate on the reason why. Um, they have that decision was taken. Um, however, I think the, there is an official that could give an explanation about the payment breakdown in terms of what was paid. I could ask him uh, if you allow that to happen, uh, Chair. Uh, who could then give a breakdown who was paid what in terms of the whole transaction so that we don't waste time about it. Um, if I'm allowed, I can ask Hoki to go ahead and just keep that information. Thank you, Chair. Hoki? Uh, thanks, Chair Person, and um, good, uh, good afternoon uh, to Minister, Deputy Minister, DG, and members of Parliament and members of Pass Support. Uh, Chair, uh, on the contract of uh, Shifambo for the locomotives, uh, the order was over uh, uh, at 70 locom locomotives, which was 50. Um, uh, 20 are for uh, locomotives, which are the ones that are currently in the country, and 50, which is the diesel uh, hybrid, which is a diesel and electric uh, um, uh, locomotives. Uh, at that point, uh, the contract was then set aside by the board in 2015, requesting that the uh, start the litigation process to set aside the contract. 13 locomotives had arrived in the country. Uh, subsequent to the um, litigation process, um, then the, the entire fleet was then handed over to the liquidators, uh, which have been uh, appointed, which is 20 Trust. The liquidators then commenced with a process of recoveries, uh, including traveling abroad to ascertain what's happening uh, around the, the project, uh, where in then they found that of the 2.6 billion, uh, the contract was at 3.8 billion. Of the 2.6 billion, Barca had paid for 1.8 uh, billion, uh, 2.6 billion was paid into Shifombo, and then Shifombo had already uh, transferred 1.8 billion uh, to uh, to Foslo. Um, the reason now we are talking about Stetler is that uh, Stetler uh, locomotives uh, have has bought Foslo uh, locomotive business, which is which is a Spanish-based company, while Stetler is a Switzerland-based uh, company chain. Uh, 
Uh, uh, so going back to the issue of liquidators, so liquidators have 13 locomotives in the country, then they put them on auction, um, following um, the auction uh, with a low value that was then uh, received um, of the 13. Uh, of the 13, uh, if I have to also indicate, of the 13 that was in the country, there was one local that was involved in an accident uh, uh, in Kimberley. Uh, so it was a damaged local. So the company that bought the entire six plus the damaged one uh, paid for 65 million, which is still uh, held in trust by the liquidators uh, 20 trust. Then um, interventions were then made that what, uh, because we are getting a very low amount, let's look at the possibility of then Brasa looking at a commercial agreement that can then um, offset what we have lost in this contract. Uh, so that's why we're sitting with the six locomotives. Uh, it also brings into the question that the locomotives are no longer the assets of Brasa, they are now under the jurisdiction of the liquidators, uh, so we, uh, again, uh, 20 trust. They, they've uh, done a number of work, including the around 385 million claim uh, uh, posted against SARS on the transaction. Uh, the matter, SARS has come back disputing the issues, but the matter has been escalated uh, further to the uh, governance structures within, within SARS. On the current proposed commercial agreement, which now involves, uh, we call it a tripartite agreement, it involves Brasa, the liquidators, and Stettler, um, the current owners now of the assets of, uh, of what used to be called for slow Espana uh, uh, business. What has that then happened is that uh, following the uh, numerous engagements uh, starting uh, last year, um, a commercial agreement has been proposed by Stettler, uh, we are offering us 22 locomotives, uh, then Brasa outrightly rejected that. Then they came up with a revised offer of one additional locomotive. Um, that's a combination of both the Afro diesel locomotives and Afro Juan, uh, which is the hybrid uh, locos. Um, that has then commenced the further discussion on the commercial agreement, which because of the court order arising out of this, this proposal has been taken to the courts for further uh, processing. But uh, uh, acknowledging that Brasa uh, needs the locals uh, quite urgently, there's then been a revised proposal that the six current in the country, which will be part of the 23 uh, final deal, um, can be then processed with the law, with the courts, requesting them to release them now urgently as part of this agreement. And to that effect, the submission was uh, submitted on Friday by the liquidators to the court. So we'll avoid the court uh, processes on that. The total value of the proposed commercial agreement uh, chair, uh, if I might proceed, is the 1.1 billion, which will be the 23 locomotives. Uh, number one, number two, it will include two year spa spares maintenance. Number three, it will include training, both in Spain and in South Africa by, 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 by Stettler. And then uh, uh, number four as well, uh, it will include further maintenance as well uh, for two years of the agreement has that uh, evaluated um, uh, proposal is then costed at 1.1 billion. And additional to that is that there's been engagement of, with Stellan University University around the issue of combustion, mainly uh, and the issues, uh, uh, especially when the trains go through our, our various tunnels within the country and the issues of the track, uh, track quality, uh, uh, um, overheads um, um, contact as well as engagement of commerce with RSR and Transnet uh, to finalize. Um, it's very important to also note that uh, the previous report that received from both RSR and Transnet was that the current locals, uh, the Afro data in the country, they can operate um, on the 3 kV line, but not uh, easily on the 25 kV line uh, chair. Um, but trust chair, I've covered uh, sufficient on the number of issues. Thanks, Chair. Um, Mr. Chairman, I really appreciate that that information. I, I, I'm, uh, yeah, it does to some extent um, contradict what what we've just been told a few minutes ago. But it's 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 great to get that kind of of detail. Thank you very very much. I really appreciate that. So, what we're looking at then, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it's going to cost us 3.7 billion rand 
for 23 locos. That will be the final cost. We've paid out 2.6 billion and this new commercial agreement um, is at 1.1 billion and that gives you 3.7 billion. And for that, we're gonna get 23 locos um, of which six are in the country. Is that correct? And I understood that uh, the, it's a value of that transaction that is going to be 1.1, not that we're going to pay. I understood that the explanation to be a value. It's valued at that amount. And you remember earlier, Chair, I did say that uh, uh, as you are, the Special Investigation Unit, they will, they will do the erratum on what they have uh, reported to SCOPA that we're only going to get uh, to uh, recover this amount. So they forgot about the 23 locals that, uh, so that, that value is a value of that what we are going to get derived from what we are negotiating, not a kind of additional payment that is talked about. This will, the 23, if you like, uh, we can say it's free of charge. I can, uh, I'm subject to correction. It's free of charge. It's based on the original money that was paid in. Um, I really do need clarity on this, Mr. Chairman, because uh, we've just been told that the commercial agreement is for 1.1 billion, and it does include some spares and maintenance and other things, which I didn't have time to make a note. But the, um, essentially, if you take the 2.6 billion that was already paid out, and then you add the 1.1 billion, you get the figure of 3.7 billion. That's how I'm getting the figure. and. Um, and for that, we will have 23 locos. Um, and I, I need to uh, follow up on what locos, but I just need clarity on that point, please. Is in the, at the end, once everything's in place and, and everything and the, the deal's been done, the cost to the South African taxpayer through PRASA will be 3.7 billion. Is that correct? Seen the DG is having his hand up. Uh, the DG wants to help on that. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Maybe I can assist uh, what uh, the Honorable Member uh, is, uh, is raising. Uh, the, the matter now is that. 2.6 has been paid uh, to Sifambo, and the liquidators are liquidating Sifambo. But Sifambo had a, a credit, uh, if we can put it that way, with uh, Foslo, which was subsequently bought by Steidler. Now, Steidler took over an unfinished delivery of the contract and the order that was placed by Sifambo uh, to, to themselves uh, through their contract with Foslo, which had now by then uh, went under and taken over by Steidler. So essentially uh, from the 1.8 billion uh, that was sitting with uh, uh, Foslo now with Steidler, they had delivered and they subtracted uh, the money for the 13 locomotives that were already delivered to South Africa, leaving them with uh, a positive uh, credit balance, uh, so to say, because the remainder of the order had not yet been delivered to Sfambo. So Steidler could not continue to deliver the remainder of the locomotives worth 1.8 or the remainder thereof, primarily because now Sfambo was under liquidation uh, and therefore no delivery was being made. Uh, some of those locomotives were already in the harbor in Valencia in Spain waiting to be shipped here and they couldn't uh, because of the ongoing uh, uh, liquidation. And they could not also deliver directly to Brasa, primarily because Brasa had not necessarily contracted uh, uh, Foslon or Steidler to actually deliver to themselves. Their client was Sifambo, which was now under liquidation. In terms of the liquidation process, then the liquidators have a right to claim the money uh, from uh, any creditors that owed uh, the company for which they are acting for as liquidators. And in this regard, uh, they had also reclaimed uh, the entire locomotives that were in the contract, the 13, as they had been set aside. Uh, they sold uh, 
a portion thereof remaining with a portion. So with the money now they were sitting with, uh, the idea was if the locomotives are being sold this cheaply, uh, then it's sort of a double whammy on the part of Prasa and the people of South Africa. In the sense that uh, you were paid for the locomotives at a premium, and now they are being sold uh, this cheaply. And yet uh, Prasa still required the locomotives uh, to use uh, on the South African network. And uh, it requires it uh, to carry through the long distance uh, train services and the mainline passenger services. And also the rental, as with the earlier presentation could have been seen, is quite steep. So the negotiations were opened with uh, the uh, liquidators to say to them, wouldn't you then allow us to talk directly with Steidler, seeing that they are sitting with locomotives? And if the first uh, seven that you sold went for this pittance, uh, then it's not worth it that we wait until you have recovered the money and whatever is due back to Prasa comes because then we're going to get uh, quite a little for every rent that we have spent uh, in this regard. So the liquidators were open to the idea uh, with the viewpoint of what was in the best interest of uh, Prasa and the country and uh, have allowed for negotiations with Steidler to go ahead. As indicated, Steidler was uh, uh, given... Uh, an opportunity to then indicate uh, with the remainder of the money within what they are having, uh, how much uh, could they uh, provide and how many of the locomotives they, can, they could. They came first with a proposal of 22 locomotives uh, and uh, that would have uh, settled the matter if we accepted that. Uh, but we, we felt that uh, uh, the price for which they have, and also they are in a fix as much as we, we are. So we squeezed them a little bit until they agreed to providing an additional locomotive, making it a total of 23 to be supplied. And uh, in addition to that, that they also offer a maintenance contract and they also offer a space for the repair of uh, the locomotives and training of our people and the transfer of skill, including setting up capacity in South Africa to be able to uh, repair and maintain the trains here. Accordingly, there were also two other things. We looked into the report of uh, the regulator, uh, the Rail Safety Regulator, SR, and uh, the Rail Safety Regulator had highlighted that uh, the challenge uh, with uh, the locomotives that needed to be addressed. So even the ones that are to be delivered, uh, should the commercial agreement be agreed to and continue, even those that must be corrected before they are actually delivered. Uh, Steidler did indicate that from an engineering point of view, uh, the technicality of lowering the trains to by the four millimeter mentioned by RSR so that they can operate uh, easily on both the three KV lines as well as the 25 KV lines, that that solution be implemented in advance uh, prior to the locomotives uh, being delivered in South Africa. They, they did go back to Spain. When they, when they did ultimately communicate back, they guaranteed that they had found a technical solution uh, for this uh, challenge and that they were able to lower uh, the trains to the requisite level that is uh, required by the RSR to operate on both type of lines uh, in South Africa that we have. And secondly, there was the issue of uh, the combustion, which uh, the emissions uh, were quite higher than what they should be, uh, and that, uh, as uh, Mr. Kochi has reported, Ramo Kagan, that the Stellenbosch University was contracted uh, to look at the solution, and we believe we have now found the solution for uh, the combustion issue as well on that matter. And those two technicalities were highlighted. The additional thing is that for the remaining six that are here, uh, that solution that they have, they are providing for the new trains they will provide has to be also effected and corrected on the six that we have in the country. But so long, uh, they can be commissioned for purposes. In fact, previously before, they, they had actually operated. Uh, just to give uh, the honorable members uh, some viewpoint is that they were originally bought for purposes of uh, socialism mail and the long distance train, which is the operation on the K three KV lines. And uh, they, they, they worked uh, very well on those lines for which they were primarily intended. But should we ever decide to switch uh, quickly and say uh, there is a problem with a 
a, a line uh, in the urban areas where metro rail operates and we want uh, this locomotive to come here. It will have presented the uh, huge challenges, which is a solution we see in the other. Uh, these locomotives were the ones that were here, the 13 that were originally delivered were delivered in Cape Town and you can see one had an accident already in Kimberley. The others were already in East London everywhere else. They were operating very well on the three KB lines and it was a challenge. Uh, so, so after the solution is presented, they will no longer be considered trains in the sense that they will now be compliant with uh, both type of lines and they can easily be switched uh, on either the three KV or the 25 KV. Essentially, uh, at no further cost, uh, Mr. Lee, uh, the locomotives will, will be delivered uh, as such within what was originally paid. Obviously, the difference between the 2.6 that was paid by Prasa to Sifambo, and which Sifambo only transferred 1.8, uh, the difference thereof is what the liquidators uh, against Sifambo are trying to recover from Sifambo. And therefore, uh, if the tripartite commercial agreement is reached, uh, the 1.8 billion, which the liquidators were trying to recover, uh, will no longer be pursued in the sense that uh, Prasa would have realized real value out of uh, uh, such a settlement or negotiated settlement. Now that there is a thorough understanding on all these points, uh, the matter has got to be made an order of court because the court has mandated uh, the liquidators to actually liquidate and the process of liquidation is known. So this is a special application uh, that uh, and the merits are on the basis that it will be beneficial to the county. So there will be no additional 1.8 that is being, uh, or 1.1 that is being paid uh, to, to Steidler by Prasa. It will be the remainder of the balance that Steidler inherited from Fosu. Uh, thank you. I, I, I hope it will clarify the honorable member. Thank you very much, Alec. It certainly is 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 clarity, and I now understand it. Um, so it's basically that for 2.6 billion, which are already paid, um, South Africa will receive 23 locos, um, which were the original number, if I understood correctly, um, of locos constructed. In other words, they were all this. They had the same problem of 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 to being too tall for the for the certain lines, and that um, a technical fix is going to be done on the ones remaining in Spain and and also on the six sitting here. So, um, I'm, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. So, in the at the end, um, the 2.6 billion rand that um, was paid will get us 23 locos instead of 70 locos. Um, how much of the, two, of the original cost did the 2.6 billion represent? In other words, if the deal had gone through and all 70 locos had been supplied, what would they have cost us? Uh, um. uh, um, I don't have the figures. I think uh, is uh, Lazarus. Do you have the figures on the if we had, had received the seventy locals, what would have been the cost? Yes, chair. The contract was for three point five billion. Thank you for 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 seventy locals. So um, our two point six billion is now going to get us twenty three locals. Um, it, that's that's basically where I was, what I was trying to establish uh, the the um, the the real cost of 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 this deal. Um, in terms of the the um, twenty three locos, so thirteen were delivered, seven were sold. So that does that leave ten in Spain? As I understood it, 23 locos had been manufactured, 13 were delivered to South Africa. Does that mean there are 10 left in Spain? Fana, are you there? Uh, I'm, here, I'm, I'm here, Chairperson. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. 
sorry, I missed the question. Can the question be repeated? The, as, as we were told earlier on in the meeting, there were 23 locos constructed by, by then Foslu. Of those 23, I understood 13 were delivered to South Africa and subsequently seven of the 13 were, were sold. But my question then is, if there were 23 manufactured and 13 were delivered to South Africa, does that mean there are 10 locos still in Spain? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, I don't have an immediate answer for you. I'll, um, I'll actually just um, gather that detail and I'll, I'll, share, I'll share, that, share them back with you. I don't have an immediate answer to respond to that, um, but I'll definitely um, get the, uh, the answers and, and come back to you. Honorable Liz, I'll ask you to wrap up. But also, this is a very straightforward question, really. You know, it just doesn't inspire confidence when you give an answer to the most basic of Krishna, not at the fingertips of the leadership and management of process. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Liz, please um, wrap it up. I will. Thank you for your indulgence. I see you given me quite a lot more time. I, I appreciate it, but I do think this is this is really- so, so, uh, sorry, so, so, sorry, Chairperson. It's Matazia again. Just to confirm, uh, we do have locomotives that are still in Spain. They are not yet delivered. I do not have the exact number. I was hoping that Fana or Bafana will be able to give the numbers, but we still have locomotives that are in Spain. Those are some of the locomotives that before they come to our South Africa, if the commercial agreement has gone through, the modification and retrofit should be done there to make sure that when they come here, there is no more modification still to be done. We will just go through the acceptance test, testing, then we then deploy them as and when required. Thank you. How many locomotives are in Spain? Uh, can I come in, uh, Chairman? Uh, yeah, you can, but uh, Chairperson of the Board, you know, this uh, ping pong kind of response is so, one from Spain, this Chair, side, okay. one from this side, really in itself is, is confusing because then it speaks to a silo mentality of, the, uh, of where information lies. Because then one member must now correct the other one or supplement and complement the other one. It, it just it just doesn't look yeah it doesn't look right doesn't feel right. It's problematic. It, it's incoherent for lack of a, a better term. Because yeah, then you, there's no finality to a response. There's no finality to one. You never know when that this is the final answer uh, or response and makes it makes transcribing and record keeping for ourselves of this meeting even more complicated because then everybody is correcting somebody. Uh, Chairperson, can I come in? Um, I can respond. It's Fana here. Yes, sure. You may proceed. Yeah, the, the answer I have is that we still have about 12 uh, locomotives in, in Spain. And, and five are still are still being manufactured. So so um, it's seventeen in total. But the answer you are looking for is twelve. Right. Okay, honourable Liz. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, and, and, and it yeah, it is you, you're right. Um, I, I um, you know the the there's a massive commercial agreement, tripartite agreement, being negotiated. And it's billions of rands. I would have thought that the basic issues of numbers of locos would be at the fingertips of anyone in Prasa. Um, it's probably the most controversial, um, and and other than the, the the theft and damage to to assets, I suppose, which may rank higher, but. Um, issue in Prasa right now and has been for years 
So anyway, let's let's move on. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you for your indulgence. I uh, I do have more questions, but I think let's just leave it at that um, and not uh, not push my luck too much. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you to the Prasa people for for um, doing the <laughs> best. Right. They can, but there you go. Can I come in, Chair? Oh, sure. All right. No, Honourable List, thank you very much. Right, colleagues. Uh, Honorable Mkonto had indicated that she would like to uh, raise a few questions. We'll hand over to her. And then, Honorable Minister, please be on standby as you'll be coming in as, as we are done. I'm also trying to be cognizant of time. There's just one or two proposals that will be coming from our side, not all the actually completed. So, Honorable Mkonto, over to you. It, uh... Good morning, Chair. Um, good morning to um, the Minister and the Chairperson of uh, the Board um, and colleagues. Chair, um, other Honourable Members have covered me in, in few things, but I just want to make uh, just maybe one comment and uh, have a question. Um, uh, I hope I'm not taking uh, you back, uh, Chairperson, because um, my question is based on uh, the deviations that were presented, presented uh, earlier on. The comment on that, Chairperson, um, uh, was um, earlier on uh, the reasons given uh, 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 to the National Treasury uh, for the deviations. And the question will be, um, what is the percentage um, of, of, of the amount that they intended to deviate on compared to the overall um, a, 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 a fund a, a allocated to the, to the SOE? Uh, because I'm looking at the amounts, we're having very high amounts of a, a funds that they wanted a, to deviate on. And uh, the second question will be, one honorable member talked about um, the 13% performance of the SOE in the previous financial year. I just want to check, Chair, if there is anyone in the SOE who got a, a, a performance bonus. Um, a, a, we, we, I'm, 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 I'm checking that because of uh, the, the, the very unsatisfactory um, performance that they have given uh, to, the, to, the, to the taxpayers. Um, some of the reasons of the deviations chairperson uh, were based on assumptions in proven that if they say uh, this is a small town and uh, we thought there won't be any uh, uh, people that will come for them. That is an assumption. And if next time they can try first and see if uh, really um, uh, uh, their assumption uh, can be realized. Um, chairperson, uh, uh, to you, the chairperson of the board and the minister, maybe it's high time that uh, we give women a chance to lead um, these entities. Um, I'm seeing a high number of men uh, leading and um, that's where we have, we, we always uh, end up. Um, the one member talked about a skills audit and, and so forth and so forth. Can please, um, Chairperson of the board, Minister, uh, I'm begging, can we, uh, in the future, give women a chance to be part of the top management and uh, 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 be chairpersons of these boards. Maybe we can get a uh, better results. Thanks very much, Chair, for the opportunity. The responses to that, and then Honorable Hatebe, you will come and conclude for us with two questions, and then we'll hand over to the minister. Uh, can I ask um, Mr. Matebula the question about the deviation PMFA? Uh, th th thank you, Chair. 
what we will do, they will just look, uh, I'm not so sure if I'm audible, but we will just look at the budget. What was the budget during that particular year? And then all compare it with uh, the applications that were sent to the National Treasury. And then they will give the, what the percentage should be, Chair, but not readily available now. Thank you. I think the, the question, uh, Mr. Matibula, was, wasn't uh, so much uh, detail like that. It was, I, I understood the question to be asking the deviation versus what is agreed in terms of PMFA. You can remember that uh, in okay. your slide, yeah. you have some 17.5, which was so, so the what is required permitted and what was in fact the end result in terms of the deviation. That was um, a question from the yeah. Can Rodney Mataba please mute the uh, device? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. The, the permissible um, <coughs> threshold for uh, variations, if I may speak, because on on deviations, uh, there, there isn't any You are on mute, so please unmute. Bob Matebula, you got muted there. May you unmute yourself? Mr. Matebula. Right. Honorable Hatta, we come in with your question. Ubab Matebula Kulma Yedwa. No, thanks, Chair. Um, there are two issues that I would like to raise. Um, one, it's in relation to the subsidiaries and their financial viability. Uh, the Auditor General has raised a concern uh, that the financial and sustainability of your subsidiaries uh, are uncertain and that the financial position keep on regressing. Um, Chair of the Board, can, can you please uh, provide progress on steps taken to address the financial sustainability of these two subsidiaries? Yeah, that's Autopex and Intersight. Okay. No, thank you, Honorable Honorable uh, Hadebe. The, the Autopex, starting with the Autopex, uh, as you know, Autopex is part of uh, PRASA in a sense that PRASA in terms of its core mandate, uh, in terms of provision of a rail system, is tied together with the bus operation. So it is correct that uh, Autopex has been going through difficulties in terms of its uh, sustainability as a standalone company. Um, now, the decision that has been taken is that to remedy or to arrest that problem is that uh, Autopex must become part of uh, a division within PRASA. Not so much about agency that's supposed to be self-sufficient because as you know, the transport provision that it provides, it does not as a generate enough uh, for its own sustainability. So the decision has been taken that uh, from April 1, it's no longer going to be a standalone. It has to be part of PRASA in terms of a division within PRASA, which means it becomes part of PRASA in a sense of uh, integration. That's the one. So that uh, in terms of the, what has been done in terms of the, whether it's uh, been a transaction advisor or the transport advisors, suggestions is gravitating to that uh, making it a, a division, divisionalization of Autopex, so that you arrest, because there's a historical debt that has built up on that particular, on the, on the, on the Autopex. I think it's in the region of uh, 240 million, which include people who help them with the spares that sometimes they are unable to pay. 
So the only arrest is that we bring it uh, back into that. That's the first question, answer on your first question. The second one uh, is in terms of the intersite. Intersite is uh, also has been a company established in terms of the company, South African Company Act, company law. Uh, intention was basically to be at high end of the market in terms of uh, development, but uh, there has not been sufficient resource put into Intersite for it to operate in that way. So recently, the, it's part of what the, the minister has given us mandate to do is to make sure that uh, there's, an, there's a merger. In other words, the Intersite must not must stop standing on their own on the side, but they must form part of the crest uh, in Prasa. Crest is uh, what is a company that is responsible, division of Prasa that is responsible to, uh, to maintenance and property. That has happened. The board has already taken decision of merging uh, Intersite with Crest so that we are also managing that particular expectation and the cost. And that in our view is the, is an issue about basically maintaining or managing this cost overrun that is happened on the entity that stand on their own. So that has been done with regard to that. We hope that will obviously in the year going forward, it will address the concern that has been raised by the, by the Auditor General. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Lastly, uh, it's in relation to uh, the progress uh, in relation to your post audit action plan and audit findings, as um, highlighted by the Auditor General. And we're raising this issue because we, we wish you well, we want you to, to succeed. And for us to be able to achieve uh, such success is to, from time to time, get progress on this. Uh, can you please just give us a sense of how many um, audit findings have you resolved thus far and how many are still outstanding as per the Auditor General's findings? Chairperson? Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Chairperson? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. With regards to the 2018-2019, we have addressed 73% uh, of uh, the audit findings. And with regards to the 2019 and the 2020, we have uh, uh, currently addressed between 15 and 20%. And we are still uh, going on with that. And let me assure you that Instead of having um, audit and risk committee meetings on a quarterly basis, ours are being held on a monthly basis because we see and we understand the magnitude of issues that we have at Prasa. And then furthermore, I wish to also inform you that our internal audit um, uh, commit, um, department, sorry, we have resolved that it should uh, convert into an advisory um, uh, period, which we call a cooling off period, so that we can be able to uh, make sure that we build the control environment uh, that can be relied upon. And when they start auditing those, those controls, we are comfortable that the control environment has been built to a, 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 a point that we are comfortable with. Thank you, Chair. So do you have a sense of when are you going to complete all the uh, findings within the financial year under review? Just a rough estimate so that we monitor progress accordingly. Okay. Our initial um, uh, timelines, we're looking at between um, the end of April so that we could have uh, finalized everything. But as I've said, um, we're getting uh, monthly progress with regards to that and the um, committee, uh, which was specifically, or a task team, which was specifically formed to deal with those um, audit findings and to report on the progress though, thereof, uh, have given themselves up until the end of uh, uh, March to be able to give a comprehensive report check. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I'm covered. Okay, no, thank you very much um, for that. Uh, Honorable Minister, I will hand over to you. I'd um, like to thank the chairperson of the board and the board members. 
and the and the executives we have taken note of the issues that have been uh, raised and those that will require um, responses if those responses which are due to us in writing and um, if they can reach us by friday close of business it's not many um, so that we can be able to consolidate uh, on our report uh, on this matter. And to indicate that um, we will be scheduling a visit to uh, PRASA and its entities and its strategic sites, uh, so that we may be able to compare what's on paper and what's been reported to what is actually uh, on the ground. We are in receipt of other information from the AG um, and the SIU, of course, has been part of this meeting and they have noted the issues we have raised and the concerns that uh, we, we may have. I just want to our assessment of things. It's just generally the attitude of those appearing before us in terms of, and I must be very frank and outright that some of the conduct today uh, is of serious concern. Just about the general attitude of other board members of executives towards parliament. We may not call it out to date directly, individually, but next time we will. And it does not sit well with us uh, when that kind of behavior really uh, plays itself out in, 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 our, in, our, in our meetings. Um, because we, we, we do not want a situation where the relationship between us and departments and entities and accounting uh, structures is one which is adversarial and one, one of tension. So I've noted that, and some members have flagged it with me on the side as well, um, just as part of the assessment. Um, so Minister, I would like to hand over to you um, for your concluding remarks on um, and comments because ultimately you have to field the questions in the house as and when these issues are raised. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, uh, and um, members of uh, the committee. Uh, the board of press are led by Mr. Leonard Ramatlagani uh, and the management. Uh, Chairperson, I wouldn't be long. Um, I will still say to the chair and the committee that uh, we are still uh, on this journey. And I think uh, you are correct that uh, they've got to move with speed, but uh, we've got to stamp the authority to show that uh, things are changing for the better. Uh, we have just last week finalized the GCO matter, and uh, one would have expected uh, coming to Scopa that uh, at least management of Prasa would have been organized, but I, I wouldn't be shocked and uh, surprised about uh, the level of organization in this meeting because uh, the center doesn't hold and uh, uh, there's been a lot of suspensions at Prasa and uh, not even suspensions, where in which uh, people uh, clearly they occupy positions that they shouldn't. And I think you have read about that. The board is supposed to have taken you on board in some of the decisions they've actually taken. So there's a lot of acting and filling of new vacancies. So the GCO has got this job cut out in this particular instance. And one will expect a more clearer and a good performance uh, going forward. But wish to uh, add that uh, I think um, the board have sort of uh, hit the ground running and um, we are lagging behind in certain instances. And I think uh, the engagement by the committee uh, will, will allow the board to go to the drawing board and uh, basically get more organized and close the gaps. So Chair, uh, I don't expect much. My good days are ahead uh, that I'm looking at in terms of PRASA. And uh, I think there is a lot of work to be done. Um, now we've got the board. Uh, I was asked about uh, two members. The two members who are going to fill the vacancies, it's already in the cabinet system. 
So I, I expect to appoint them probably between March and April <clears throat> because it has got to go to the cabinet committee from there uh, to cabinet. So in the next cabinet cycle, when the board comes here, I think those members will be, will be appointed. And also the processes with regard to constituting a proper executive management of PRASA is quite urgent. Employment of new people, requisite skills is very critical uh, for us. But the chair, I don't wish to waste your time. I want to pause there and say that uh, I've signed a compact agreement with the board and um, uh, that I've actually done. And uh, uh, I expect that uh, all the issues that include fruitless expenditure, uh, among others, and issues that are outstanding in terms of uh, uh, irregular contracts at Prasa, uh, which the board working with the management must deal with uh, going forward. And that includes a whole lot of things, including the Steidler issue you were talking about. We got a full briefing on that. And I think the DG tried to explain to you uh, on the matter what uh, is our understanding. I've been to Gibela. I'm going there also tomorrow with the, the board. I mean, with the members of Houghton, they asked me to accompany them. But uh, there's a whole lot of issues that are before the board that must come to the minister in that regard. But I wish to thank you, Chair, and not waste your time because I think we are chasing the sitting of parliament uh, in no time uh, uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much, Chair. All right, no, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Uh, I think we will leave it at that uh, with the understanding that uh, the the hearing is not concluded as Honorable had about four other areas that he would natively with the issues of the expansions and deviations. Uh, once things have uh, been sorted out and as the minister is saying, the center um, is, is not holding uh, because we still have to deal with the uh, financial implications uh, in so far as the administrator was concerned because they were in part responsible for this year. Uh, and so have to look at that as well. So the issues are, are far from over. We really still have a long way to go. And so we will be communicating a uh, chairperson and minister uh, on when our oversight visit will be uh, to Prasa as part of uh, broadening the understanding of the committee because these uh, oversights must be viewed in that context. They enable us to oversee you correctly uh, without guessing. Uh, so that we find each other. Ultimately, we all want PRASA to work because the majority of our people are reliant on a functional and effective PRASA uh, in the country. So that's very, very important. Um, and so we're hopeful that in the next engagement, uh, vacancies will be filled and that uh, we'll be able to interact with uh, the GCO. So really our uh, perspective Insistence and insistence on PRASA must be viewed in the context to say, we want to see PRASA working. We want to see PRASA actually functional. So I would like to thank you, Minister. Thank you, Chairperson, Deputy Minister, DG, and your team as well, uh, and all the executives and the board members of PRASA and to the SIU and National Treasury. Colleagues, uh, tomorrow we will be dealing with ESCOM. Uh, in the morning, and we'll be having the SIU tomorrow evening, uh, and then we'll be done for the rest of the week. So we've got a talker block day tomorrow, um, and so I would like us to leave it uh, at that and to remind PRASA that uh, the deadline for any of the outstanding questions, uh, responses to questions rather, is Friday close of business. Mr. Kali and Mrs. Kabinda will be in touch uh, with PRASA as well in that regard. So Minister, thank you very much. And we will uh, meet uh, the uh, not so distant future. Having said that, colleagues, the matching stands adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.